defending uh, post play. Those are the things that Northwestern does against us. <laughs> of course our national anthem as we get set for Big Ten basketball tonight Indiana and the Northwestern Wildcats here at the Assembly Hall in Bloomington a big night for IU since they can clinch a tie for the Big Ten title and then of course win it outright next Wednesday in their next ball game where they take on Michigan State maybe the biggest plus max out of this uh, upcoming series of ball games to end the season is the fact that Indiana only plays three games in the next 15 days total and of course they had five and 15 previous to this they were a tired basketball team I think this will give them a chance to get their legs back I think you're right about that I certainly thought at the Ohio State game as I know you did too that they were really a tired ball club and may have accounted for part of that loss I thought they got some of their energy back in the Minnesota game but having a couple of days off now and then really has helped and I think you'll see a, a different type ball club here tonight I also think it's good news that Pat Graham has continued to play well, even though I'm sure he is a bit sore, as Bob Knight alluded to in the pregame show. But uh, he didn't show a great deal of signs of it in practice this week. Well, the thing that he doesn't show any signs of is I've, what I've watched is he seems has no hesitation whatsoever, no fear. You know that a guy who has broken his foot two straight years has got to be thinking, gee, is it going to happen again? But he plays just as hard as if it has never been broken before. And, of course, the constant question around the Assembly Hall and around Bloomington and throughout the state, in fact, is when will Alan Henderson be ready, if he'll be ready? And, of course, no one has the answer to that at this point. Point. All we can tell you is that he continues rehabilitation on that knee. Whether he'll be back this year or not is anybody's guess. And I'd say if you're looking at the realism of percentages, it's about an 80-20 uh, chance that he'll be back. And I think that's 80-20 against. Yeah, probably so. He, the last couple of days that I've been out here, he's been walking the steps all up and down assembly hall here from the bottom to the top. So that's certainly encouraging. He was shooting a little bit yesterday, but he was shooting flat-footed, not making any jumps at all. Max, this uh, Northwestern basketball team it comes up with a major surprise last Saturday. They beat Purdue at Purdue, breaking a 60-game losing skid on the road in the Big Ten. And when you look at the Northwestern team, again, as Knight alluded to in our pregame, this is a ball club that has some pretty decent talent. They do some things pretty well. As you may recall in our first game up there, they played pretty solid basketball and gave Indiana a lot of problems. You may recall they were doing a lot of back cutting in that game, playing uh, right up even, and then all of a sudden, as they have seemed to have done over a number of years, hit a dry spell, and Indiana just kind of blew them away, and suddenly it was all over. But one of these days, they're going to sustain that, as they apparently did in that Purdue game, and win one. <laughs> well... I don't know what the PA announcer Chuck Crabb is trying to get across to the crowd here, but they got a hum so loud in their PA system tonight that it's probably the most irritating thing I think I've heard for a while here. Oh, really? I got the earphones on, and I just don't want to hear them at all in here, so uh, I'll have to take your word for that. Well, we'll be back and talk more about this ball game in a moment, but first, let's pause for the 60-second break. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. I stopped in the muffler shop the other day to see about their so-called guaranteed muffler service. What I saw was this guy offering me the same muffler he had just put on a 1959 Packard. Come on, not all cars are the same, and neither are their muffler systems. A muffler and exhaust system is an important part of your car's performance. At Jim's Tune-Up Center, their muffler service might cost you a little more, but when you leave, you're going to have a big A muffler designed especially for your car or light truck, and it's going to be warranted for as long as you own that car. That's Jim's Tune-Up Center in Monticello on 1st Street under the big smokestack. This is Rick Mount. For years, parents, players, coaches have asked me to teach them to shoot a basketball like I do. Basically, I have taught myself using a procedure I call the Mount Method of Simplified Shooting. At my shooting camp on St. Joseph's campus in Rensselaer, Indiana, I teach this method to all boys and girls enrolled. All campers receive my instructional video on shooting plus a video of them shooting with my comments on improvements. For a free brochure, call 219-583-3940. That's 219-583-3940. Final warm-up tosses, and uh, likewise, the Hoosiers will be out momentarily. Crowd of uh, over 17,000 expected on hand tonight. The weather conditions outside certainly aren't... Uh, creditable for uh, making the trip to Bloomington if you're driving from outside the uh, community here, but uh, 
I know a lot of fans wouldn't miss tonight simply because of Calvert Chaney. Well, I think that is the attraction tonight. I suspect that it were just an ordinary Indiana Northwestern game as some might have decided to stay at home. But tonight is very special. And now here come the Hoosiers for that very special night. And, of course, uh, this is a big ball game for the Hoosiers in that they also can clinch a tie for the Big Ten title. I think the one thing about this Hoosier basketball squad, Max, that is so impressive is how much they have learned and grown over the past four years, especially for those seniors. But I think more impressively, how they've changed things from last year to this, being able to win those ball games that last year they could only hope to win and didn't have a real feel for. All of a sudden, they're taking uh, teams and breaking them down and finally beating them when they absolutely have to put it on the line. They're being able to come up with those plays. Well, they've shown an awful lot of maturity this year that they didn't seem to apparently have last year when they would lose those kind of games. They have played in some very uh, tough games, some of which they've lost, or uh, lost, yeah, a couple, but most of the time they've been able to pull it out. And I think that's a mark of maturity. Also, this ball game tonight... Uh, Marks the first time that Ted Valentine has been back uh, as an official. Uh, Valentine, of course, was the guy who teched uh, Bob Knight's uh, bench in the uh, Duke ball game last year in the NCAA tournament. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of reception he gets from the crowd here tonight. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think the officials get introduced to these before the game, so the crowd may not be aware of just who he is and certainly may not have the opportunity. But he makes one bad call, that, or at least that the fans <laughs> think's a bad call. He'll hear about it, I'm sure. Well, we got a couple of uh, messages we want to pass along tonight, one being uh, our deepest uh, hope that George Gressley Sr. is fine. Uh, we understand that... Uh, he has uh, was been struck ill, and uh, obviously, George, if you're listening tonight, we don't know if you have the opportunity, but if you do, if you don't, uh, somebody will pass this along to you, but we want to wish you the quickest of recoveries, and uh, I know he's been a special friend of yours, Max, for a long time. Yeah, he really has, Don. I've known George Gressley for a long, long time, and I really consider him a, a real friend, and as, as our colleague Joe Smith over here has become to know him recently, too, so we're all uh, hoping very much that uh, George... Uh, improves and gets back here watching these games because he loves to come to these basketball games. Another friend of mine uh, is kind of a special today and a friend of George Grassley's also and that's Claude Rich who hired me at Indiana University and uh, who has been my mentor over the years a lot. He's 86 years old today and we want to wish Claude a very happy birthday and if, if uh, he isn't listening maybe somebody will tell him we said so. <laughs> Well, what a great uh, gentleman he is. And uh, Claude, of course, has endeared himself, I think, to everybody at Indiana University, much like Herman Wells. Well, they have a lot in common. Of course, they both came out of Howard County. Claude came out of Rusheville. I told him one time I went through Rusheville, and he said, well, where are you going? You went out of your way to get there then. <laughs> All right. Well, Bob Knight makes his first appearance on the floor tonight. He and Bill Foster will shake hands here momentarily. And the Hoosiers go to the bench. We're about to have the introduction to the starting lineup for tonight's ball game. Let's uh, give you a quick look, first of all, at the Northwestern Wildcats. Bob Knight now shaking hands with Bill Foster going over there, patting him on the back as uh, the ball clubs will be introduced here. The Wildcats will start at the guard spots with Pat Baldwin, a 6'1", 190-pound junior from Leatherworth, Kansas. Baldwin's a 12-7 scorer on the season. At the other guard spot, the anticipated gentleman there will be Dion Lee. He's 6'5", 180, a sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky. He is averaging 10.3 a ball game. At the forwards will be Cedric Dillon, a 6'5", 195 sophomore out of Layton, Alabama. He's averaging 16 points per contest. And Kevin Wackett will be in the middle at 6'11", 265, a junior from De Pere, Wisconsin. And Lee is average, or rather Rankin is averaging 16.2 a ball game. The other starting forward will be Dewey Williams at 6'9", 225. He's a sophomore from Indianapolis. He is out of North Central High School, and he has been starting recently for the Wildcats. So Dewey getting the start against the Hoosiers tonight. He averages 3.1 a ball game. For Indiana, the Hoosiers at forward tonight with Calvert Chaney, the 6'7", 204-pound senior out of Evansville, Indiana, averaging 21.6 points a contest. And the other forward spot will be manned by... It appears they're going to introduce uh, Pat Graham as a guard here tonight. So we're going to put Greg Graham at the other forward spot at 6'5", 204, a senior out of Indianapolis. He's averaging 15.2 a ball game. 
In the middle will be Madenover at 6'8", 230 pounds, a senior from Chesterton, Indiana, a 10-7 scoring average. The guards will be Pat Graham at 6'5", 204, a junior out of Floyd Knobs, Indiana, a 6'2 scoring average. And Damon Bailey at 6'3", 200 pounds, a junior from Heltville, Indiana, a 10-6 scoring average. So that's the way Indiana will start tonight's ball game. And we'll be back with a tip-off after we pause for the 60-second network timeout. Hi, this is Woodard Scott for True Value. We'd like to recognize the Indiana University basketball team, better known as the Hoosiers, for their hard work all season. When a basketball team needs a spark to get them going, they rely on their best scorer. But when a fireplace or barbecue needs a spark, rely on the March Bargain of the Month, an Amon Flame Butane Lighter from Scripto. It's disposable and offers thousands of lights, and it's just $2.36, while quantities last at your local True Value hardware store or home center. Let's talk electricity. I have a few words. Indiana's consumer-owned rural electric cooperatives. Quite a mouthful, huh? Well, maybe our name's so long because we do so much. Like providing reliable electric service to over a million people across the state. Or investing over two billion dollars into bringing you the electricity that offers you necessities like lights, refrigerators, washers and dryers, and much more. Indiana's rural electric cooperatives. But you don't need to call us by name. Just know we'll be there whenever you need us. My apologies to our affiliates. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. WNJY Delphi Monticello, where we have the Midwest Agri Weather with Earl Finkel six mornings a week at 640. The officials for tonight's ball game are Ed Hightower, Ted Valentine, and Tom O'Neill. And we're about ready. The Broadcast is authorized under rights granted by Indiana University to University Broadcasting Company and the IU Network. Any rebroadcast or the use of descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of University Broadcasting and the IU Radio Network is prohibited. We are ready. Hightower will toss the ball in the air. It'll be jumping center, Calvert, Cheney, and Rankin, and a tip is controlled by Calvert to Matt Mover. In backcourt, the pass comes to Pat Graham, and Pat across the timeline goes right to Calvert. Cheney drives baseline, pulls up, fires and hits. Calvert Cheney wasting no time getting his first two of the ball game. He is now eight away from the career scoring record in the Big Ten. Down low, ranking with the ball. Inside pass thrown at the Baldwin. Now off to Kip Kirkpatrick. Down in the corner, the shot by Nellums is no good, and the rebound comes down to Indiana's Greg Graham. Down the floor, Graham top of the key. Goes left to Calvert, three on the way. Got it! Albert Sandy's fifth point in a hurry. Five nothing Indiana, the fans are already on their feet. Here is Cedric Nellens, top of the key. Goes left side to Baldwin. Back inside, the ball battered away, but Baldwin comes up with it for Northwestern. He drives it toward the white side. He lets the long jumper fly. He got it. Patrick Baldwin, his first two of the contest, and puts the Wildcats on the board. Here's Greg Graham the other way. Drives inside, scoops it up. No. Calvert tips it in. Sandy has got seven already. And the Hoosier players on the bench are high-fiving one another. He's just three away. Nellens to Rankin. Outside to Baldwin. Back to Kirkpatrick. Now to Nellens on the left wing. Back outside to Williams. Dumps it in. Throws it out of bounds. Dewey Williams tried to hit Rankin down low and tossed it out of bounds. Indiana will have the ball back. The Hoosiers lead 7-2. And all seven belong to Calvert Cheney. And listen to the crowd. They're on their feet. They want Calvert to get the next bucket, too. Lob pass. Great grab with a slam dunk. What a beautiful alley-oop by Damon Bailey. And timeout is called by Northwestern. Indiana, nine, Northwestern, two, 18-20 on the clock, and we're back after a 60-second network timeout. Great game for copyright, Bob. And how about that star player, Bob? Oh, the Canon NT6060 copier. Fires a copy a second. And the Canon NT6060 has amazing depth. Holds a million sheets. Now, Bob. OK, 6100, backed by professional service technicians. Millions of them. Bob. OK, a lot. And each has 70 years of experience. Bob. Bill finds the average. Copyright. The Canon MP6060 is just plain amazing. And it's from copyright. Call them today. Hey, speaking of ears, Bob. Yeah, Bob. Are those gray hairs I see? In the Hoosier State. 
State Farm is helping Indiana families with the free family insurance checkup. A State Farm agent is there to help you keep your car, home, life, and health insurance up to date. So the coverage you need will be there when you need it, wherever you live, from South Bend to Evansville. Check your phone book. Get your free family insurance checkup now. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Huntley Hall, we're in the Addison. A 9-2 leader over the Wildcats. Seven of those points already belong to Calvert Cheney. And Max, of this crowd is on its feet and has been almost since the onset, just cheering on Calvert. Well, with those seven points that came in the first minute and ten seconds, he went around Steve Alford, of course, as the Indiana all-time scoring leader. He needed just six. He's got his seven. So as you said now, he's just two away from a tie, three away from having the record. So Calvert Cheney on the verge of history. And I'll tell you what was really neat. His teammates were over there high-fiving on the bench. Well, we got to talk to Norm Ellenberger. He was standing up being a cheerleader after <laughs> one of those shots. I've never seen Norm do that. Now we're going to get to talk to him after the game, as always. Dewey Williams will inbound for the Wildcats. Bill Foster, of course, wanting to get this surge stopped early if he can. Here's Pat Baldwin to Kip Kirkpatrick. Looks low, can't find Williams, gets it into Nellums, and he beats Damon Bailey for a slam dunk. Cedric Nellums, first two of the ball game, it's 9-4. Here's Greg Graham. Backcourt dribbles, stops, looks, gives it out to Damon Bailey, who goes to Pat Graham right wing. Pat looks inside, into Matt Nover, he turns, in trouble, and finally clears it to Damon. To Greg, looks down low, couldn't find Calvert, back to Nover, Nover inside. And he had it batted away. It goes out of bounds. It'll belong to IU. <laughs> Bill Foster is screaming. He says, no way did we touch the ball. Valentine started the motion the other way, and Ed Hightower overruled him. I maybe think that the Hoosiers got a break there. Damon Bailey will trigger it in. Bailey looks. Having trouble gets it into Nova, but it's batted away. He tried to force it. He couldn't find anybody to pass it into. So the turnover against IU, and the Wildcats down by five have the basketball. Kirkpatrick goes right to Nellums. Nellums on the wing. Stops and looks down low, finds Williams. He turns and fires. No good. Rebound, Pat Graham. Outlet to Damon. Bailey across the timeline. Takes it to the left wing. Slows it up. Looks inside. Comes out to Pat Graham with a pass. Pat slides it right. Comes back left. Down the lane. Scoops it up and scores. Pat Graham, that's his first two of the ball game. Indiana 11, Northwestern 4. Down across the timeline, Baldwin goes to Williams, left side to Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick inside, throws it out, and there's an offensive foul against Northwestern. I think Rankin got nailed on it. Matt Purdy, a 6'6 sophomore, is going to check in for the Wildcats. And we wait to see if Rankin was the guy called in the foul. It was Kevin Rankin, his first foul of the ball game, and the Hoosiers get the ball in the turnover. And Matt Purdy has checked in to take Dewey Williams' spot, and here's Greg Graham in backcourt. Graham bounces to Nover. Turnaround 12-footer, short rebound, taken down by Cedric Nellums. Nellums comes back the other way. Off to Baldwin. Baldwin goes left side to Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick comes outside to Nellums. Right side pass to Baldwin on the perimeter. He drives it to the free throw line. Cut off. Flips it back to Kirkpatrick. Now left to Nellums. Nellums looks in. Comes outside to Purdy. Matt Purdy on the dribble now to the right wing. Gives it off to Kirkpatrick. He holds on the wing. He brings it back with a left hand dribble. Goes low baseline to Nellums. Inside. Puts it up. No, but a foul on Calvert Chaney. Calvert will get nailed on the personal. As he tried to help out on Matt Nover's man, and Cedric Nellums will go to the line. Cheney has his first foul of the ball game. And the ball will belong to Nellums at the free throw stripe. He's 16.30 on the clock, first half of play, and Nellums at the line. 6'5 sophomore, the leading score, or second leading score, we should say, on this Northwestern team, but the leading score in Big Ten play for them. And he hits the free win his third point of the contest. Nellum is a 74% shooter from the free throw line on the season, averaging uh, 16 points a contest throughout both Big Ten and regular season play totally. And he hit them both. He's got four. 11-6 score. Northwestern down five. Hoosier basketball and Greg Graham with it. Looks outside, gives it to Damon Bailey. Back to Greg on the right side of Calvert. He fakes, drives baseline, pulls up, puts it up, and missed it. And the rebound comes off to Kirkpatrick for Northwestern. Back the other way. All alone, 
Kevin Rankin scores his first two. That's the third easy basket the Northwestern's gotten in this ballgame. 11-8, and the Cats are down just three. Here's Bailey. Goes to Calvert. Calvert back to Damon. Now to Greg Graham. Graham drives it in. Fires a 15-footer. Missed the shot. Got his own rebound. Fakes. Puts it back up. And no good. Rebound batted away. And it's pulled out of there by Baldwin. Hoosier fans thought there should have been a foul call. Here's Kirkpatrick on the right wing. Kip holds. Looks outside. Gives it off to Matt Purdy. Purdy got it by Cheney. Gives it off to Nellums. Nellums on the right wing. Nellums now. Looks inside, stops his dribble, gives it outside to Kirkpatrick, who goes to Baldwin, left side of the circle. He comes top of the key to Purdy. Back right to Nellums. Nellums drives it in the lane. Fires a 15-footer. No good. Rebound, Pat Graham. Down the floor on a break. They'll slow it up. Graham, top of the key, takes it right. A whistle blows, and we get a foul call. I think Cedric Nellums was reaching in on Pat Graham, and one of the things that Pat Graham does, Max, he always tries to drive it inside if he sees that little opening. And he saw it and drew the foul on Nellums. That's the first foul on Sudrick. And he's not a little guy going in the lane. He weighs about 210 pounds, so you don't just really stand there and take that unless you really got a lot of courage. Bailey will inbound. Damon gets it to Matten over outside to Greg Graham. Graham off the Pat Graham. He looks low, goes to Bailey on the baseline, drives, stops, looks for help, clears it to Calvert. Calvert takes it inside, kicks back to Bailey. Bailey fires a three, off the rim, no tip up good by Matt Nover. Nover's got his first two. 13 to 8, Indiana. Here's Purdy to Kirkpatrick for the Wildcats. Outside to Nellums, top of the key, right side to Baldwin. Baldwin looks low for Kevin Rankin. Rankin turns on Cheney and fires it up and got it. Kevin Rankin's got his fourth point. Now it's 13 to 10. Here's Greg Graham for IU on the right side of the circle. Bounces back to Pat Graham for a three try, and it's no good. The rebound comes off to Nellums. Back the other way for Northwestern. Across the timeline in backcourt with a basketball is Pat Baldwin. Baldwin for the Cats gives to Nellums left wing. Down low to Rankin. Rankin baseline shot short, and the rebound comes off to Bailey. Damon down the floor to Calvert. Calvert Cheney. Left side of the circle. Lobs it to Greg Graham, and it's off the rim, and it comes down to Northwestern. Here's Nellums the other way. Pulls up, fires, and hits. Cedric Nellums has got six, and it's a one-point contest. Indiana suddenly has the Wildcats right back in and on top of them. It's 13 to 12. Here's Greg Graham against the zone, outside the Bailey. Bailey circles, top of the key, back to Graham. Graham goes low to Pat Graham on the right wing. Pat looks inside, cross-courts it out to Bailey. Bailey back to Graham, three-pointer on the way, gone. Ray Graham banks on his second basket of the ball game, and he's got five now. And the Hoosiers leading at 16 to 12. Right side pass comes off to Kirkpatrick. Top of the key goes to Nellums. Inside to Rankin. Turning jump shot is no good. And the rebound to Calvert Cheney. Down the floor to Greg Graham. Graham slows it on the right side of the circle. Gives to Calvert. Cheney goes right wing. Looks low. Comes outside to Graham with a pass. Graham back to Pat Graham on the right wing. Pat down inside to Nover. He turns on Rankin. Fakes. Looks. Gets it out to Calvert. Calvert down low to Greg Graham who lost the handle. Matt Nover comes up. Fires and is fouled. Kevin Rankin, I believe, with number two. No, but it's not Rankin. They're going to call it on Matt Purdy. That'll be his first foul of the ball game. So the foul on Purdy, his first. And let's see, it'll be Matt Nover going to the free throw line as Todd Leary checks into the Hoosier lineup and Pat Grand gets the rest. At the stripe... Nover got the free one to drop. He had, what, six of seven max in that Minnesota ball game? Something like that. Hit uh, six in a row before missing. And he's got one more coming here. And he got them both. Matt Nover's free throw touch may be returning. He's got four points, and it's 18 to 12. The Hoosiers are a six-point leader in the ball game with 12.55 on the clock first half. Here's Kirkpatrick. Right side pass to Baldwin on the wing. A whistle. And let's see what this is all about. Valentine makes the call, and the foul is against IU. Matt Nover called for the foul, his first of the ball game. That was off the ball, so Northwestern will take it out of bounds. Kirkpatrick will inbound it, gets it to Nellums. Baseline jumper quickly, good. Cedric Nellums has got the hot hand for Northwestern, and he's got eight already. 
18-14. Bob Knight not happy with the Hoosier defense right now. Here's Leary, left wing. Gets it outside to Damon. Down right side to Greg Graham. Graham brings it back out. Jump pass goes to Leary. Leary fakes, drives left. 18-footer. Off the rim, no. Rebound inside comes off to Matt Purdy. Charles Howell's in the ball game for the first time for the Cats. Here's Kirkpatrick in backcourt. Howell replacing Rankin. And here's Baldwin to Kirkpatrick. Right side pass comes to Nellums. Nellums looks in. Comes back top of the key to Purdy for a three try. And it rimmed in and out. And off out of bounds. It'll belong to Northwestern. So the Cats will have it. Heard two whistles. And Nellums is being talked to by Ed Hightower. I think maybe he might physically be having a problem. He might have got a little cut. They're walking him toward the uh, Northwestern bench. He, I think he may have a cut lift. Talking about Purdy's uh, shot there that almost was down. I just took a quick look at his stats. Poor guy's hit only three out of 17 from three-point range, and you can see with that kind of a shot where in the Big Ten play where he has his problems. That thing was halfway down the hoop. Brian Evans and Chris Reynolds are checking in for IU as Matt Nover sits down. So does Damon Bailey. So Bob Knight's unloaded a lot of his bench already. The Hoosiers are a four-point leader. And backcourt with the actually left-wing pass comes to Kirkpatrick from Howe. Outside the Baldwin. Now back to Kirkpatrick. He works against Todd Leary. Gets it left on the baseline to Baldwin who brings it back out to the wing then fires it up and got it. What a 17-foot jump shot by Pat Baldwin for his second hoop. He's got four points and suddenly the lead's down to two. Back to the 1-2-2 zone. Goes Northwestern as Leary to Reynolds. Right side pass to Greg Graham. Graham brings it back out. It comes off to Chris. Chris goes to Leary. Leary looks inside for Calvert. Can't find him. Goes back out to Chris Reynolds to Graham on the right wing. Now again to Chris. Top of the key. Tries to penetrate. Gets it to Leary. Leary on the left wing. Pulls it back out to Chris Reynolds. Outside to Greg Graham. Three on the way. I do not know. Wouldn't go. Rebound comes away to Baldwin. He'll bring it across the timeline. Here's the pass into Howell. Lays it up and in. Again, the Hoosiers beaten on transition defense. It's tied up at 18-all. Now, Leary, right wing, outside to Reynolds. Top of the key, back to Todd. Down to the corner to Brian Evans. Inside pass deflected out of bounds. It'll belong to IU. Here's Kevin Rankin checking into the lineup, and we got a timeout with 11 minutes on the clock first half. It is Indiana 18, Northwestern 18. We'll be back after the 60-second network timeout. The Hoosier Lottery reminds basketball fans that you have to play to win. Well, with two seconds left, the All-Stars are going to have to give the ball to star shooter Swish Sampson. Dave the dribbler Nelson inbounds looking for Swish, but where, where is he? Oh, no, the Swishter's on the sideline signing autographs. The All-Stars lose a heartbreaker all because of a seven-foot ego trip. Get in the game and win. Play the Hoosier Lottery. Play the Hoosier Lottery's newest instant game. Crash the boards and pull down $1,000 instantly. There are three chances to win in this basketball game from the Hoosier Lottery. To defend your soybeans against weeds, you need power. You need control. You need consistency. You need this squadron. Squadron herbicide for a higher level of soybean weed control. See your Cyanamid AgriCenter dealer. Read and follow label directions. Here at the Assembly Hall for the 20th consecutive year, IU basketball games are being brought to you over a statewide network of radio stations numbering over 50 strong, including WWOK in Evansville, WORX in Madison, WBWB here in Bloomington, and WKUZ in Wabash. We're extremely proud to have these stations as a part of this year's IU network. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast. Well, Northwestern is the poorest shooting team in the Big Ten. They're dead last, but they are not dead last tonight. They have hit seven of their last 11 since that 9-2 to two run Indiana had, and they are hitting 72% during that period of time. For the game, they're hitting 61%. On the other hand, since Northwestern took that timeout, Indiana has hit only two of nine during that period of time and are shooting just 47% for the game. Greg Graham will inbound it for the Hoosiers. Graham, Brian Evans, Calvert Chaney, Chris Reynolds, and Todd Leary the line up for IU. And Kevin Rankin checks back in for Northwestern. The backcourt pass goes to Leary. Leary now looks at right, gives it to Graham. Graham brings it back out to Todd. They're going to a 2-3 zone right now. Bounce pass low to Brian Evans. He brings it back out of the wing in double-team trouble. Clip 
Kicks it off to Chris Reynolds. Now to Leary. Passes right to Greg Graham. Graham inside drive. Pulls up. Fires and couldn't get the shot to fall, but he was fouled. Good driving move by Greg Graham, who has a pretty heavily bandaged right lower leg. He and uh, Todd Lindemann in practice this week collided and uh, put a pretty good-sized gash, I believe, in Greg Graham's leg out there, but he appears to be fine. Graham, two shots coming, has five points in this contest and now six. And he'll have an opportunity for one more. He has been red hot from the free throw line this year, 85% in Big Ten play. And that one is also good. He's got seven. Indiana takes the lead back at 20 to 18 with 10.42 to go first half. Up the floor, Kip Kirkpatrick for Northwestern. Takes it inside to Kevin Rankin, high post. He turns around against Evans, gives it off, and a foul is called on Todd Leary. Leary gets nailed in a foul that Deion Lee is the recipient of as Leary now has his first of the ball game. Deion Lee, a 6'5 sophomore, expected to start and did not, but he's in there now. He gives the ball to Kirkpatrick in backcourt. He bounces it into Rankin. Rankin turns, tried to get it to lead, does, puts it up, missed the shot, rebound inside, batted away, pulled up, and put back in by Northwestern. And T.J. Rayford also checking into the lineup for the first time, gets the shot to fall. It's a 20-20 tie. Here's Chris Reynolds. Driving it right. Gives it off to Greg Graham. Graham back outside to Chris. Now to Leary. Todd gets it left to Brian Evans in the corner. Back out to Todd Leary. Leary fakes it right. Goes back to Evans in the corner. Drives. Brings it back out to Todd. Todd again takes the left side. Gives to Chris Reynolds. Top of the key. Penetrates. Gives to Leary. Three-pointer on the way. No good. Rebound inside. Taken off by... Deion Lee. And the Cats have a chance to take the lead in the ball game for the first time. Here's Pat Baldwin. 12-foot jump shot short. Almost an air ball. It's bounded out of bounds. And Indiana will have it as Rankin touched it last. Bob Knight on his ball club right now. They're not performing defensively like he'd like. And I don't think he feels they're getting the kind of movement offensively they need either. Here's Leary. Back outside to Greg Graham. Graham fakes. Gives it on the wing. Greg brings it back outside. Looks for help now. Bounces to Todd. Todd goes to Reynolds. He penetrates to Brian Evans. Baseline jump shot. Off the rim. No. Calvert rebounds. Inside. Turns around. Lost the handle, but he's fouled. Kip Kirkpatrick will get nailed on the personal. That's his first of the ball game. And I believe Indiana will take the ball out of bounds. That was down in the act of shooting. Although it may look like they're going to line up to shoot it. Damon Bailey is going to check back in for Todd Leary. Calvert Cheney right now is buried right in the middle of that zone defense that Northwestern is throwing up. He has not touched the ball except for a rebound he just now got. They are really shutting him out. Well, Calvert's got seven points in the ball game, two regular field goals and a three-pointer. Two shots coming to him here. The first is in the air, and it is no good. So Calvert... This is his first attempt from the line tonight, an 82% shooter from the stripe in Big Ten play. Matt Nover checks back in for the Hoosiers. Brian Evans to the sidelines. It's a 20-20 tie with 9.18 to go first half. And Indiana try to retake the lead here as Calvert Cheney has one more free toss coming. Takes his time, puts it up, and this time no good again. It rolls out, and Calvert Cheney misses two in a row. 20-20 score is tied up and stays the same. The Cats again with an opportunity. Here's a drive down low. Baldwin saves it to Rankin. Rankin now back out to Deion Lee, who fires a three and missed it, and the rebound comes long and over. Now for Indiana to Chris Reynolds. Reynolds takes it inside, pulls up, gets it to Calvert. 12-footer is no good. Rebound batted away and pulled out of there by Rankin for Northwestern. Here come the Cats again. Now... Mount Baldwin goes to Lee, left wing. Lee holds. Back out to Kirkpatrick. He drives it inside. Kicks it away to Rankin, who fires the shot. No good. The rebound batted away. Knocked out of there to Lee. A missed shot. Another battle for the ball. And this time it's Damon Bailey. Bailey down the floor. Takes it inside. Puts it off to Chris Reynolds. But there's going to be a foul call. A block on Kip Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick will be called for his second personal. And Damon Bailey is the man who draws it. That's 16 fouls now against the Wildcats. And the Hoosiers are going to get it out of bounds. 
8.26 to go in the half. Coming into the ball game is Cedric Nellums as Kirkpatrick will sit down. India has scored only one basket in the last seven minutes of play. They're just shooting 39% right now. Well, Bailey actually is now at the free throw line, so he will get to shoot too. The first of which is in the air and no good. Indiana is now, has missed three in a row. And four of seven for the ball game. Bill Foster directing traffic for the Wildcats on the sideline as Damon missed them both. And all of a sudden, Indiana has missed four consecutive free throws and another opportunity to take the lead back. Here is Deion Lee going to Cedric Nellens, right side, cross courts and threw it away. Reynolds on the steal. Chris takes it all the way and lays it in. Reynolds, first two of the ball game to give Indiana the lead back by two at 22-20. 8.04. First half, Baldwin across the timeline to Rankin. He turns around, looks for help, drives it left wing, pulls up, fires, missed the shot, rebound Damon Bailey. Bailey the other way. Damon drives it right, tried to pass it inside, it's stolen away by Northwestern. They got a break to T.J. Rayford for a slam dunk. And Rayford ties it at 22, his fourth point. 7.39 to go in the first half, and the Hoosiers can't break away from this Wildcat ball club. Here's the pass outside. Reynolds goes left to Calvert. He fakes, he drives, he fires a 10-footer, hits! Calvert Sandy has got nine. He has tied the career Big Ten scoring mark. His next point will break the record, and he will have it under his belt. Now Baldwin takes it left side, lobs it low to Rankin. Rankin cross-courts it out to Nellums. He fires the shot up, got it, a three-pointer. Cedric Nellums is 11th point of the ball game. 25-24. Indiana is now trailing by one. First lead for the Cats. Here's Bailey out to Calvert. Now to Greg Graham. He fakes. Graham brings it back to Reynolds. Reynolds. Fires it out to Greg Graham, down low to Calvert. Calvert fakes, gets it inside to Nover. Turn around, fadeaway shot, good! Man, Nover's got six. 26-25, IU by one. 6.39 to go, first half of play. Indiana back on defense, their man as Northwestern's Pat Baldwin crosses the timeline. Picked up by Reynolds, takes it right wing. The ball batted away again, and Baldwin stepped out of bounds. And here's timeout being called with a score. Indiana 26, Northwestern 25, 627 to go first half. Let's pause for the 60-second network timeout. Indiana CPA Society advises you to carefully review your checkbook, credit card statements, and tax returns from previous years. These records should help jog your memory to uncover tax-deductible expenses you may have overlooked. If you are running out of time and cannot file by April 15th, be sure to complete IRS Form 4868. This automatically postpones your filing date until August 16th, but you must enclose a check along with the form to cover the amount you owe. For help with your tax return, contact a certified public accountant or the Indiana CPA Society. CPAs make a difference. Hi, this is Woodard Scott for True Value. We'd like to recognize the Indiana University basketball team, better known as the Hoosiers, for their hard work all season. A thunderous slam dunk or a buzzer beater shot is something special. And in March, True Value has something special of their own. A time-all cordless plug-in timer from True Guard. It gives empty homes a lived-in look when you're away. And it's just $3.79 while quantities last at your local True Value hardware store or home center. Before we go any further, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. You're listening to Joy 103, where you get a wake-up call every weekday morning at 5 o'clock with NBC's First Light and your host, Dirk Van. Well, Max Indiana's taken the lead back from the Wildcats, who had it just for a moment, but it has been tough sledding here for IU with a 26-25 lead, 6.27 to go, first half. Well, that timeout that Foster called early on really was a good timeout because Indiana was about to blow him away, and since then he's gone to that zone. It's been very effective against Indiana. Indiana's now hit three in a row and are shooting 47%. Northwestern has hit only one of its last six hitting just 52%. The rebounding is almost dead even. Northwestern 13, Indiana 12. Damon Bailey will bring it up for IU. Gets it to Chris Reynolds in backcourt. Here's that 3-2 zone to Bailey, left side to Calvert. Calvert doesn't take the long one, gives back to Damon. Now back to Calvert, he fires a three. Got it! There it is! Sadie's 12th point of the ball game, and he has a new 
career scoring champion for the Big Ten. 29-25, Indiana by four. Here's Reynolds all over Kirkpatrick. Now to Miller. The fans are on their feet, standing ovation. They won't sit down, and the Hoosiers got the rebound off the Howells' missed shot. Here's Graham. Greg gives it to Calvert. Calvert drives, pulls up, fires, and missed the shot. The rebound comes away and is knocked out of bounds. Indiana will have it. Touch last by Northwestern. Dewey Williams will check back in for the catch. This crowd is still not sat down. They're on their feet. Calvert Cheney is getting a standing ovation with 5.42 to go. Damon Bailey will inbound. Bailey has it inside, knocked away. The belong to Northwestern. Apparently got it to Graham, and he kicked it out of bounds. Four turnovers now for Indiana. So the Hoosiers, 29-25 leaders in the ball game, give up the ball, and Northwestern has it. Here's Kirkpatrick on the dribble in backcourt. Gives it off to Patrick Baldwin. Baldwin looks it low, fires it to Dewey Williams. Williams against Calvert, gives it back to Baldwin. Now to Kirkpatrick on the right wing. He holds high. Bailey's guarding him. Now he dribbles it out top of the lane. Takes it left, looks right, comes back to Nellums on the right wing. Nellums against Graham, back out to Kirkpatrick. Now to Williams again on the left wing. Williams holds, brings it outside. It goes to Nellums. He drives it right, pulls up. He's stripped away by Greg Graham. Down the floor, Damon Bailey across the timeline. Left side to Greg Graham. He lets a long one fly and got it. Greg Graham has got 10. His second three of the night. The Hoosiers lead at 32-25. Back on top by seven. Here's Kirkpatrick against Bailey. Pulls it outside. Looks at left. Lobs it into Nellums. He puts it up and he's fouled by Calvert. Shaney has picked up his second personal foul. As he tried to help out on Nellums, who was driving the baseline, Bob Knight is not very happy with his ball club. Both of Cheney's fouls have come when he's come across to help out somebody else. Neither time has it been someone that he has been signed to as guarding in this thing. Knight looking down his bench right now as he brings Pat Graham off and puts him in for Greg Graham. And so Nellums at the free throw line. And Nellums fires up the free one. It is good. And Cedric Nellums now has cut the lead down to six. Nellums has 12 points in this ball game. Boy, has he been hot. And he fires up his second toss. Good. He's got 13. So now it's 32-27. The Hoosiers have a five-point lead. And up the floor comes Damon Bailey. Bailey for IU. Works it toward the right side, pulls Chris Reynolds back to the left, gives the ball to Chris. He tries to move it left side, comes back right to Damon. Bailey goes inside to Nover, who turns, curves to Pat Graham, who pumps it up and hit it. Pat Graham with a 17-foot jump shot, and he's got his second basket, his fourth point. On the left side, move, bringing it back out as Nellums to Kirkpatrick. Back right it comes to Baldwin. Baldwin goes to Rankin, who fires an 18-footer, and he got it to fall. Kevin Rankin, sixth point. Back down the floor come the Hoosiers. 34-29. Pat Graham inside. Fakes puts it up, blocked away. Calvert has it knocked away from him, and he'll go to the line. Foul call will go against Nellums, I believe. Nellums or Baldwin. It's going to be Nellums. That'll be his second foul of the contest. So Cedric Nellums has two. And Calvert Cheney, who has 12 points in this contest, will go to the line for the second time tonight. He missed his first two tries from the stripe. Indiana's a team four of eight right now as both he and Bailey have missed two shots. Calvert eyes the first attempt on this try. 3.58 left in this first half, and he got it. Roll around the rim and drop through. He's got 13, and Calvert will have one more. Shaney breaks Glenn Rice's career scoring record in Big Ten play out of Michigan and also overtook Steve Alford tonight, and he hit them both. Timeout is being called. 14 for Cheney. The score now reads Indiana 36 and Northwestern 29. We'll be back after the 60-second break. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. 
You know, it seems like these days it's not easy to find a good home-cooked meal at an affordable price. That is, unless you've been to Kim's Kitchen. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, Kim's Kitchen can have a hot, home-cooked meal ready for you in minutes at a price you can appreciate. Kim's Kitchen is a friendly place where you can always find a clean table and timely service. And the best part, a home-cooked meal that you don't have to cook. Try Kim's Kitchen today for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Kim's Kitchen just south of Monticello, next to the Madam Carroll. This is Rick Mount. For years, parents, players, coaches have asked me to teach them to shoot a basketball like I do. Basically, I have taught myself using a procedure I call the Mount Method of Simplified Shooting. At my shooting camp on St. Joseph's campus in Rensselaer, Indiana, I teach this method to all boys and girls in rural. All campers receive my instructional video on shooting plus a video of them shooting with my comments on improvements. For a free brochure, call 219-583-3940. That's 219-583-3940. Well, back once again to the Assembly Hall, where Indiana is on top of the Wildcats of Northwestern, 36-29. We have three minutes, 58 seconds to go in this first half of play. Indiana beginning to work a little bit better now against that Northwestern zone as they have now hit 13 of 26 for an even 50%. That's after a low water mark of 7 of 18 for just 38.9. So in the last uh, couple of three minutes here, they have hit six out of nine shots, or seven, see, six out of uh, seven shots during that period of time. Northwestern, on the other hand, dropping down now after hitting... Uh, Almost 62%. They've dropped off to 52%. Damon Bailey hadn't scored yet tonight, but he's already got three rebounds and four assists in this game. Out of the flow for IU, we have Reynolds, Bailey, Matt Graham, Calvert Cheney, and Matt Nover. And the Wildcats have Kip Kirkpatrick, Patrick Baldwin, Dewey, Williams, along with uh, Cedric Nellums. And the other man out there is Rankin. And right now, it's Selim. Nellum's getting rid of the ball to Kirkpatrick in backcourt. He holds on, Reynolds, drives it left, fakes the shot, gives to Williams, right side pass to Baldwin. Baldwin back out to Kirkpatrick, left side to Nellums for a three try, missed it this time, and Bailey's got the rebound. Outlet to Reynolds, Reynolds on a break, inside to Pat Graham, lays it up and scores. Pat Graham has got six, and the Hoosiers lead at 38-29. They've got their biggest lead at nine now. Backcourt pass to Rankin, who holds. Gives to Nellum's left side of the circle. Guarded by Pat Graham, starts at left, comes back outside, looks, gives to Pat Baldwin. Top of the key, inside to Kirkpatrick, who broke down the lane and got an easy one. That's Kirkpatrick's first two. 38-31, Indiana has had trouble solving Northwestern's cutting defense, or offense, rather, and especially getting some easy buckets inside. Here's Reynolds, who fires it to Pat Graham, and there's a foul call. Cedric Nellums reaching with hands rather than moving with feet and gets nailed on his third foul of the ball game. So their hottest shooter, Cedric Nellums, has picked up number three. 2.51 to go in the half, and Bill Foster will bring Deion Lee off the bench. Nellums got 20 points in our first game. Indiana played, hitting 9 out of 25 shots. He threw up a lot, but he also hit a lot. Chris Reynolds fires up the free one, and it rims out. The rebound comes out to Dewey... Williams, and it'll be brought down the floor by Northwestern. Kirkpatrick on the dribble, spins to the right side, pulls up, gets it out to, to uh, Williams, now lobs it low, down inside, it's stolen away. Calvert Cheney got the steal. Here's Chris Reynolds, slowing it up, giving to Damon Bailey for a three try, and he got it. That's Damon's first shot of the night that has dropped in, and he's got his first three. 41-31, Indiana by 10. Backcourt pass goes to Nellums. Nellums bounces it into Rankin. Rankin turns, fakes, fires, and hits. Kevin Rankin with his eighth point of the ball game. 41-33 score. Indiana right now an eight-point leader with 2.07 to go in the half, and Brian Evans getting ready to check in for IU. Here's Damon Bailey out to Chris Reynolds. Reynolds back to Damon, another three on the way, and he missed it this time. Rebound tipped up. Calvert got it, puts it up and in. Calvert Cheney has got his 16th point of the ball game and a beautiful rebound basket. And it's 43-30, and Rankin beats Nover inside for an easy two. Rankin's 10th point of the contest, 43-35. Here's Bailey across the timeline. Damon with it left to Calvert. Calvert fires a three, no good. The rebound knocked away by Reynolds, and it's a foul on Chris. Reynolds will get nailed on his first personal foul, and into the lineup will come Pat Knight and Brian Evans. 
as Reynolds picks up number one. That's five team fouls whistled on IU. And also coming in is T.J. Rayford and Dion Lee for Northwestern. Nover to the sideline, Calvert Cheney to the sideline for Indiana. And Cheney gets a standing ovation again. Calvert has 16 points here in the first half. 43-35 score, but the Hoosiers haven't shaken the Wildcats. Here's Pat Graham almost coming up with a steal. Now with it is Lee. Lee drives it right side, gives it off to Pat Baldwin, back inside to Rayford. Rayford puts it up, missed it, a whistle, we got a foul. Northwestern has really done a pretty good job of running their offense, Max. They have. They've had that, uh, the back door cut has really been effective. They're now shooting 55%. That's way above what they normally shoot on the year, 44% for the year, but they've done an excellent job against Indiana. T.J. Rayford will be at the line. The foul call was on Brian Evans, his first. Rayford has four points in the ball game, but not a very good free throw shooter. He's hit just 30% of his shots from the line this year, and he bangs that one off the back of the rim and out. And he'll get one more opportunity. Rayford averaging 2.3 points a ball game. 6'7", sophomore out of Waynesboro, Georgia. Eyes for his second attempt. It's in the air and high off the rim. No good. Rebound. Kirkpatrick tried to save it, but he did into the wrong hands. Brian Evans comes up with it. Down the floor to Bailey. Damon in backcourt to Reynolds. Reynolds back to Damon. He looks, gets it to Brian Evans, turns, one dribble, gives the Pat Knight back to Damon. Now outside to Chris Reynolds, to Brian Evans' right wing. Brian looks to cross court, gets it out to Reynolds. Reynolds, again to Pat Graham on the right side. Pat pulls it out of there, and he goes outside to Chris Reynolds with a pass. Back to Pat Graham, he fires the long one, and no good. Rebound, lost by Lee, but he picks it back up and fires to Patrick Baldwin, who drives it the other way. Outside pass to Kirk Patrick. Kip Kirkpatrick with a basketball for Northwestern to Pat Baldwin. Again to Kirkpatrick. Looks it inside, holds high. 29 seconds, all the remain in the half. Kirkpatrick is waiting. And now as he's picked up by Pat Knight, fires it away to Deion Lee. He goes left to Baldwin. The shot, or the clock is down to 17. And here's a whistle. And we got a pushing foul against IU. Indiana just got nailed in another foul call with 15 seconds to go in the half. And they're going to nail this one on Bailey. That's his first of the ball game. And so it'll put Northwestern at the free throw line. 17 foul whistle against IU. One and one is in effect for the Wildcats for the first time. Deion Lee is the man going to the stripe, and he's a pretty good free throw shooter, hitting 74%. As Reynolds sits down, Greg Graham comes in. And Deion Lee at the stripe has not scored and still hasn't as he missed that free one. The rebound batted away, and David Bailey's got it. Down to four, Bailey in a hurry. Down in the lane, fires it up, and got it. Bailey with a nice driving, running shot, and he's got his fifth point of the game. Now it's 45-35. Kirkpatrick fires it up at the horn, and that's the end of the first half. It didn't go. We are at halftime at the assembly hall, and the fat crowd that came here tonight wanted to see Calvert Cheney break to the career scoring record in Big Ten play, and they saw that as he overtook Steve Alford for IU and Glenn Rice for Michigan to become the Big Ten's all-time leading scorer. Now the Hoosiers are trying to wrap up a share of the Big Ten title, and at halftime they lead it by 10, 45-35. We'll be back with our halftime show in a moment. Let's pause for the 60-second network timeout. When was the last time you thought about your electricity? Never, right? Well, there's a reason for that. It's called Indiana's Consumer-Owned Rural Electric Cooperatives. And we've been providing you and a million other people with reliable electric service for 55 years. And we've invested over $2 billion to bring you electricity for conveniences like TVs, refrigerators, toasters, and much more. Of course, there's a reason Indiana's rural electric cooperatives work so hard to serve you. You are, after all, our owners. University Broadcasting Company is proud to bring you IU basketball. University Broadcasting serves Indiana with the finest in sports radio. University Broadcasting Company operates two sports networks and seven radio stations, including WHHH, Hoosier 96 in Indianapolis, WBWB, B97 in Bloomington, WGCT in Ellettsville, and WAZY, Z96 in Lafayette. University Broadcasting Company is Indiana's radio broadcasting company. Thanks for listening.
Well, back once again at the Assembly Hall. We are at halftime tonight where Indiana is leading Northwestern 45 to 35. We have 14 minutes and 27 seconds remaining in this uh, halftime, of course, and we've got uh, lots of things going on here, not the least of which is the individual scoring in the first half. Let's first look at Northwestern as Pat Baldwin has hit two field goals for four points, no fouls. Deion Lee did not score in the first half, nor did he foul. Kevin Rankin has five field goals, ten first-half points, and one foul. Cedric Nellums has been the hot hand as well. He has thrown in 13 first-half points. He had four free throws, one three-point field goal to go along with three regular field goals, 13 first-half points for Nellums, but he also has picked up three personal fouls. Charles Howell has one field goal for two points, no fouls. T.J. Rayford, two field goals, four points, no fouls. Kip Kirkpatrick has a field goal for two points and two fouls. Dewey Williams did not score or foul, nor did Matt Purdy score. He did pick up one personal foul. So the top scores for Northwestern, 13 for Cedric Nellums, Kevin Rankin with 10. For Indiana, Chris Reynolds has a field goal for two points and one foul. Damon Bailey has a pair of field goals, one of those being a three-pointer for five first-half points and a foul. Matt Nover has two field goals, two free throws, six points, one foul. Calvert Chaney with 16 first-half points. He has two three-point field goals, three, make that four regular field goals, and two free throws. So he got his points every way you can get them. He has 16 points in this ball game, and of course, as we said before, is the new career scoring leader in conference history as he surpassed Glenn Rice tonight. He also took over Steve Alford's spot in the number one list for Indiana. Alford, of course, trailed Rice by just four points. So Cheney was 16. Greg Graham has, now oh, he also has two fouls. Greg Graham has two three-point field goals, a regular field goal, and two free throws for 10 first-half points, no fouls. Brian Evans did not score, picked up a foul. Pat Graham with three field goals, six points, and no fouls. Todd Leary did not score, has one personal. Pat Knight did not score or foul. So the Hoosiers have two double-figure scores as well. Calvert Chaney with 16 and Greg Graham with 10. But on Indiana shot 51% in that first half, and that's pretty good considering at one point they were shooting only 39%. So they were 17 of 33, 51.5. Northwestern hit 15 of 28, 53.6. And as we mentioned during that first half, that is way beyond their normal shooting percentage, which is just 44% on the year, 42% in Big Ten play. From three-point range, Indiana 5 of 12. That's just right on the mark of what they're hitting all year. And Northwestern 1 of 5, just 20%. They likewise are not good three-point shooters. From the free throw line, Indiana 6 of 11, 54%. As both Bailey and uh, and uh, Damon Bailey, uh, Ch Calvert Chaney and Damon Bailey, both missed the, both of two shots uh, they put up there in that first half, which is most unusual for those two players. Northwestern, the Big Ten's leader in free throw shooting, four of seven in the first half. Rebounding, Indiana out rebounded Northwestern 20 to 16. Damon Bailey had five rebounds. He also had four assists in that first half. Calvert Cheney had four. Lee led Northwestern with five turnovers, just four against Indiana, and six against the Northwestern Wildcats. As Indiana holds a lead here at halftime of 10 points, 45 to 35. And we were talking about Cheney. He was six of 10. And interestingly enough, it was a three-point shot coming at the 6-12 mark of that first half that put him over the top, gave, made him the Big Ten leader. All right, we'll be back with our halftime guest, the men's tennis coach here at IU, Ken Heidegger, right after we pause for the 62nd timeout. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. Have you ever thought about how much work your brakes do every day? You know, the average set of brakes stops your car safely over 100 times daily, and that's not counting when you slow down. Your safety, as well as the safety of your family, depends on your brakes. That's why Jim's Tune-Up take a great deal of pride in providing the very best in brake service. All brake jobs include a complete four-wheel check and turning of the drums or rotors if necessary. And you can even get pads that are guaranteed for as long as you own that car. See Jim's Tune-Up in Monticello today on First Street under the big smokestack. This is Rick Mount. For years, parents, players, coaches have asked me to teach them to shoot a basketball like I do. Basically, I have taught myself using a procedure I call the Mount Method of Simplified Shooting. At my shooting camp on St. Joseph's campus in Rensselaer, Indiana, I teach this method to all boys and girls 
is rolled. All campers receive my instructional video on shooting plus a video of them shooting with my comments on improvements. For a free brochure, call 219-583-3940. That's 219-583-3940. Assembly Hall in Bloomington, where Indiana leads Northwestern at halftime 45 to 35. And uh, of course, the big news is Calvert Cheney breaking the scoring record for the Big Ten as he moved around Glenn Rice with his outstanding performance in the first half, which was good for a total of 16 points in the first half. Well, we have Ken Heidinger, the tennis coach, men's tennis coach at Indiana University, seated alongside us. And uh, I'd kind of hoped, uh, Ken, when I talked to you about being on with me, it'd be tennis weather outside, but uh, tonight's not hardly tonight. But nevertheless, you've got some indoor facilities to play in, so I guess you don't worry about those things too much anymore. Well, I'd like to get outdoors, but we do have a great facility, so we're going hit, to hit a bunch of balls, whatever the weather is. Well, Ken, uh, let's talk a little bit about you're now in your ninth year, I believe, here at Indiana University, and you've had uh, pretty good success. And uh, according to the press release put out earlier this year, uh, talks about last year, you slipped up on some people, and finishing second in the Big Ten with a good good season record, but you weren't going to be able to have anybody look by you this year. Has that been the fact yet? Of course, you haven't gotten into Big Ten play yet. Well, I think that um, the people that we've been playing are always ready to play uh, when we come. We've, we've had a good program for several years I think so we're not trying to sneak past anybody we've just got to get good talk a little bit about your team if you will uh, I know last year you were telling me that you had just uh, found a young man from England that uh, turned out to be your number one player uh, talk a little bit about your team well we've got three seniors on the team this year that are giving us some really good leadership they're working very hard they're competing well Tom Weesey and David Hell both from Indianapolis and Nigel Russell from Great Britain um, David Held just won a match against Notre Dame last night. It took uh, 22 deuce and ads in the game that he served out to win the match. So they've been working hard for us. Then we have three sophomores that are starting. Um, uh, Eric Barrett out of Indianapolis, Mark Abelman out of Canada, and Chris Angel out of New Jersey. Chris has been a big surprise. He played six for us last year. He's moved up to number one this year. He got to the semifinals of uh, the Big Ten indoors defeating the number one seed there and has beaten some players in the top 30 in the country. He is really making great strides. What kind of a record? Uh, you've been playing since early in the fall, one kind or another. Uh, I realize you haven't gotten into Big Ten play yet, but uh, how are things been going? We're four and one right now. We lost to Notre Dame last night. They're six in the country. We lost them 6-1, a disappointing loss. We thought we matched up well. Um, they played well, and we've got to practice some more. Well, Ken, uh, we're going to come back and talk a bit more, but right now we need to pause. We're Indiana leading by 10 points at halftime, 45-35. Let's pause 60 seconds. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. I stopped in a muffler shop the other day to see about their so-called guaranteed muffler service. What I saw was this guy offering me the same muffler he had just put on a 1959 Packard. Come on, not all cars are the same, and neither are their muffler systems. A muffler and exhaust system is an important part of your car's performance. At Jim's Tune-Up Center, their muffler service might cost you a little more, but when you leave, you're going to have a big A muffler designed especially for your car or light truck, and it's going to be warrantied for as long as you own that car. That's Jim's Tune-Up Center, in Monticello on 1st Street, under the big smokestack. This is Rick Mount. For years, parents, players, coaches have asked me to teach them to shoot a basketball like I do. Basically, I have taught myself using a procedure I call the Mount Method of Simplified Shooting. At my shooting camp on St. Joseph's campus in Rensselaer, Indiana, I teach this method to all boys and girls enrolled. All campers receive my instructional video on shooting plus a video of them shooting with my comments on improvements. For a free brochure, call 219-583-3940. That's 219-583-3940. The men's tennis coach here at Indiana University. And Ken, we were talking about the Big Ten season, which will be getting underway shortly. Uh, do you guys take a summer break, not a summer break, but a spring break like the baseball team and go south? We go down to Montgomery, Alabama this year and play in the Blue Gray Championships. Last year there was 10 of the top 20 teams in the country there, so that's going to be a, a good event to open our outdoor season. Ken, uh, of course, we hear so much about women's tennis here at Indiana University, and certainly Lynn Loring has uh, had great success since he's been here. Does that put an added pressure on you as the men's coach? No, we just, uh, you know, tennis is a, is a great game, and you've got to respect the game and try to, that's where the pressure is, and that's what the, the uh, 
the view is, is trying to have the best tennis players here we can have, and nothing plays in other than that. Where uh, where do you get your tennis players? I know you have a, some out of Indianapolis. Do you go wide to recruit? We generally, in the U.S., we stay from uh, the Midwest to move up to the eastern seaboard. We go a little bit overseas. We've had some players from Great Britain, uh, but generally people with the same culture as ours. What about uh, high school tennis in Indiana? Is it uh, pretty good? Needs a little improvement? It could use a little of improvement. Uh, we don't have the, uh, the population base that some of the surrounding states have, but, but there are some good players that come out of Indiana. What about the Big Ten this year? Who's going to be the contenders? Well, I think uh, preseason Minnesota and us were co-picked one, and Ohio State and Michigan and Northwestern are also going to be very tough. In tennis, uh, and I think in some other sports too, track comes to mind real quick. Uh, your players are allowed to play with the pros and everybody else. Or there doesn't seem to be any problem about an amateur and that kind of a standing. So do you have opportunities to play in, that, in open meets that way? Well, Nigel Russell's played in Wimbledon qualifying. Two years ago, he beat uh, Sook from Czechoslovakia, who beat McEnroe in Davis Cup doubles this year. So our players do play, uh, uh, some of them do play at that level in the summer, yes. I would assume that is a big help to you. It's some good experience, and, and uh, to have players grow, they've got to be in situations where they've got a chance to do better than they've done before, so that that does help our players grow. Ken, uh, just a couple of seconds here. Uh, when does your Big Ten season open? We open the first weekend in April, and it goes through uh, the first two weekends in May. And you'll be a winner of your first home meets. I think our first home meet is very late, about the 20th of April. Ken, we wish you the very best. Uh, we're looking forward to getting outside, as I'm sure you are. For being our guest here at halftime, I'd like to give you this gift certificate from D. Dan's. Gentlemen and ladies, clothiers in the North Willow Mall on West 86th Street in Indianapolis. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, man. All right. Ken Heidinger, the tennis coach here for the men at Indiana University, uh, talking to us about tennis in general and about his Indiana tennis team. Well, the official stats have been passed out, and Indiana in the first half hit 17 of 35. That's 48.6, just a shade off what we had. For the uh, Northwestern Wildcats, 15 of 29, 51.7. Indiana, 5 of 13 from big from three-point range. That's 38.5. They had an extra third, uh, 13th shot there. We only had 12, and uh, Northwestern, one of four in uh, three-point shots, 25%. Indiana out rebounding uh, the Wildcats by a 21 to 16 margin. So that's a look at the stats quickly here. As we mentioned, Calvert Cheney with 16 points already, six out of 11 in that first half, two out of three from three point range and two out of four from free throw range, six rebounds. He had a, a very outstanding first half and now he can relax and just play his game as Indiana has already, or as he has now broken the Big Ten record, and now Indiana is set about to try to get a piece of this Big Ten championship. Well, the two ball clubs are taking their final warm-up tosses here tonight, and we'll be back after we pause for the 62nd time out. This is a network break. I nestled into booth 12 at Waffle House when I heard that... May I help you? ...voice. There stood the most pleasant, caring... Nice haircut. ...person I'd ever met. Over the next hour, we shared... I recommend... ...many thoughts. Coffee. ...about life. You see, I had reached... Dessert? Fishing tips? ...the service zone. If we could be open more than day and night, we would. We're more than lip service. We're your Waffle House. I moved to booth 11. Oh, Miss. The Hoosier Lottery reminds basketball fans that you have to play to win. Well, with two seconds left, the All-Stars are going to have to get the ball to star shooter Swish Sampson. Dave the Dribbler Nelson inbounds looking for Swish, but where, where is he? Oh, no, the Swishers on the sideline signing autographs. The All-Stars lose a heartbreaker all because of a seven-foot ego trip. Get in the game and win. Play the Hoosier Lottery. Play the Hoosier Lottery's newest instant game. Crash the boards and pull down $1,000 instantly. There are three chances to win in this basketball game from the Hoosier Lottery. Before we go any further, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. WNJY Delphi Monticello, the perfect station to listen to while you work. The ball will belong to the Wildcats to start the second half as Indiana is a 45-35 leader at the break. 
This Hoosier ball club playing decent offense the first half, but struggling to stop Northwestern's offensive game, especially on their give-and-go cuts. And obviously the Cats getting a fairly decent number of good inside baskets in the first half. That's the one thing that had Bob Knight, I'm sure, upset at halftime. Well, they did a lot of that in that very in the first game we played up at Evanston. They were very effective with it. Indiana at that game had a 12-point lead at halftime, so it's a very similar game. Kirkpatrick in to Ellums, who gives it right back to Kirkpatrick for Northwestern. Pat Graham, Greg Graham, Damon Bailey. Here's Nellums losing it out of bounds on a Kirkpatrick pass that hit him right in the foot. So Indiana has Bailey, Greg Graham, Pat Graham, Calvert Cheney, and Matt Nover starting as they did the ball game in the second half. The Cats drop back into a zone defense. Looks like a 2-3, but off times goes to a 3-2. Here's Bailey, top of the key, looks at left, goes back right to Greg Graham. Graham bounces back to Damon, who drives it left side, pulls it back out to Greg. Greg goes back to Damon in the corner to Calvert. Calvert fakes, drives, pulls it out to Bailey. Bailey drives it inside, gives it back to Calvert. Now to Greg, top of the key. Greg Graham holds, gives it back to Calvert Cheney for a three try, and he bombs it home. Calvert Cheney has got 19. That's his third three of the contest, and the Hoosiers' lead is up to 13 quickly at 48-35. And here's a steal, and a whistle, and a foul. Kirkpatrick will be nailing a personal. Pat Graham went down, and he's all right. Calvert Cheney pulls him up, and he's got his arm around his neck. I think Calvert thought maybe he hurt his foot again. I tell you, Calvert does a lot of talking anymore. You used to not see him do much out on the court, but he doesn't mind chewing into somebody now. At that time, it was not that kind of a conversation. Kirkpatrick picks up his third foul of the ball game, and Indiana's got the ball back. Here's Greg Graham driving a right side. Pulls it out, gives to Calvert Cheney. He drives it to the free throw line, spins, dumps it back to Bailey. Damon drives it left to Pat Graham. Graham brings it back outside. Now Pat gives it to Greg Graham, who fires a three-shot. Good! Greg Graham hands another. He's got his 13th point. The Hoosiers suddenly by 16. 51-35. That's the third tray of the night for Greg Graham. Cedric Nellums now against Bailey. Gives it outside to T.J. Rayford. Rayford goes left side to Baldwin. Baldwin drives it wing. Goes down low to Kevin Rankin. Turns, jumps it inside, and they threw it out of bounds. Rankin was trying to hit Kirkpatrick. And I'm not sure Kirkpatrick ever saw it coming, and Bill Foster, who called timeout early in the first half, does the same here in the second half as Indiana's broken to a 16-point lead at 51-35, back after the 60-second network timeout. In the Hoosier State. State Farm is there with a free service for Indiana families. Whether you're insured with State Farm or not, call a State Farm agent. Ask about a free family insurance checkup for your car, home, life, and health insurance. Find out where you stand. The advice is free, and the decisions are yours. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Listen carefully. Hear anything wrong? Of course not. You see, the parts in this engine are Napa brand, backed by Napa's national warranty program. So if you bought a part in Boston and it didn't work in California, you could return it to one of the 6,700 Napa stores coast to coast. But don't worry, nothing ever goes wrong when you have a warranty. Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. Our halftime guests at IU Basketball Games receive a gift certificate from D-Dance Gentlemen's and Ladies Clothier of Indianapolis. D-Dance has updated classic clothing, sportswear, and accessories for men and women. They're open daily Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Wednesday and Thursday open till 9. That's D-Dance Clothing to complement your lifestyle in West 86th Street at Township Line Road in the North Willow Mall in Indianapolis. Well, Foss Coach Foster calls a timeout again just as he did at the start of the game. He called one at the start of the game at the 18-22 mark. He calls this one at the 1830 mark. See if he can shut down this Indiana team, which has jumped out to a 16-point lead. And Indiana has the ball with a chance to up it even further as Damon Bailey, Calvert Cheney, Greg Graham, Pat Graham, and Matt Nover continue to play in the second half for IU. Deion Lee has checked in for Northwestern along with Nellums, Baldwin, Rayford, and Rankin. Here's Greg Graham bringing it across the timeline quickly. Takes it to the left wing. Greg pulls it back out to Bailey. Bailey lobs into Calvert. Calvert down low. Pitches it off to Pat Graham. Fires, but he's fouled. 
And Graham will go to the line as T.J. Rayford is nailed on the personal. And Rayford has his first foul of the ball. Gamble the Hoosiers with an opportunity now to jump the lead to 18. 18, 16 on the clock, final half of play. Don Fisher along with Max Scriven bringing you to tonight's Big Ten basketball contest as Pat Graham fires and couldn't get the roll. Graham hitting 70% of the season from the line. That season for him is much abbreviated. One more attempt coming. Number two, got it. Seven points for Pat Graham. Indiana now, 52-35 leader. Across the timeline with the basketball is Patrick Baldwin, who takes it left side to Nellums, down low to Rankin. He turns, works on Dover, jump hook, no good. Rebound batted away to Bailey. Damon, up the floor across the timeline. Slows the top of the key, goes left to Pat Graham. Pat back out to Damon. He drives it inside. Scoop shot up and no good. Rebound comes off to Rankin. Rankin clears it away. It comes off to Deion Lee, and he'll bring it up against Damon Bailey as he crosses the timeline, takes it left side, gives the ball to Nellums. Nellums holds backcourt pass to Rayford. He holds top of the key. Pat Graham batted it, but Nellums comes up with a loose ball. Now outside to Lee. Lee backcourt to Baldwin. Baldwin goes left side on the wing to Nellums, who fakes, then drives, pulls up, fires, and missed it. The rebound comes up to Matt Nover. Good defensive play that time by Cheney. Here's the give to Cal Greg Graham, and he got hit in the eye by... Deion Lee, no call, and the fans uh, react to it, but Greg Graham will go to the sideline. And Greg may have gotten hit and got a cut. Whatever the case, he's being taken to the sideline by Ted Valentine. So Greg Graham is over there right now. And Coach, Coach Knight's saying, how in the world can a guy get cut and no foul be called? So at any rate, Greg Graham being looked at, and Pat, I just saw Bob Knight, and he just looked at Valdez. He says, how can you not call a foul? 52-35, <laughs> 17 point Indiana lead, 17-18 to go. Who's your basketball? And Greg Graham is being checked out by the trainer, Tim Garl. Apparently the contact lens is what came awry in Greg Graham's arm. Well, I hope that's all it is. They get it back in and everything's going. It must be because otherwise they'd have somebody in substitution for him. So they're fixing up the, the contact. So it is a contact lens problem that they're dealing with with Greg. Calvert Cheney talking with Dan Dockett here momentarily. Opportunity. Max, uh, a celebrity in town this week as Nick Nolte, a uh, movie star out of Hollywood, is studying Bob Knight. Uh, and what he does as a college basketball coach for Nolte's next role in a film called Blue Chips, which is all about a college basketball coach. I'm sure everybody in Bloomington will have great interest in that movie when it comes out. I understand it's to be shot in May, June, July, and August or something like that. Somebody said they were going to build a 2,600-seat gym on the set someplace in Los Angeles. And so it's uh, very much interesting. I guess he'll be here through uh, next Wednesday's game. And apparently they are going to have a press conference on Monday. So there's been a lot of interest already. I didn't pick up what, what everybody's laughing about. Greg Graham is back in. He's all right. And now we're ready to go again. And man-to-man -man now being used by Northwestern. Here's Bailey outside to Greg Graham, who drives it into Calvert. He turns, clears it to Bailey, to Greg Graham for a three-try, and bingo! Didn't hurt his shot. He's got 16, and that's his 4-3. Greg Graham with 16 points, and Indiana leads it 55-35. The Hoosiers by 20 as they start to pull away. Right side pass comes off the ball, but he brings it back out, fakes, bounces low inside to Rayford. He puts it up, missed it, knocked it out of bounds, and the other ball. Again, the Hoosiers will have it, and the Wildcats have not scored here in the second half. They've been outscored 10 to nothing. Greg Graham has hit four out of five three-point shots. He has been shooting the lights out from three-point range all year. Here is Calvert Chaney. He lets it go. He got it. Calvert Chaney's got 21. Well, he's broken from his scoring slump of late, even though it wasn't really a slump. But he hadn't made more than 12, 14, 15 points in his last three ball games. Here's Rayford, lobs it into Rankin. Rankin has it batted out of bounds by Bailey. It'll belong to Northwestern. 
Good defensive play inside, and the Hoosiers are much more difficult here in the second half, Max, to get the ball or allowing and allowing Northwestern to get the ball inside. They haven't had many easy ones. This is two straight games, which Indiana has gotten the second half off to a roaring start. They're a 13 to nothing run right now. The inbound play will be made by Kirkpatrick, who lobs it into Rankin. He goes backcourt to Baldwin. Wildcats with it. They're down 22. Here's Kirkpatrick. Against Pat Graham, kicks it away to Dewey Williams, who's checked in. Outside left goes to Pat Baldwin. Baldwin down low to Rankin. Here's it back to Kirkpatrick, who drives it left to the baseline, puts it up on a one-hander and got it. Kip Kirkpatrick with his second basket, his fourth point. 57-37. Pat Graham baseline, cut off. Backcourt pass to Bailey, outside to Calvert. Calvert fakes, drives it back to Damon. Damon drives it inside, gets it to Greg Graham. Three on the way, no good. Rebound, battle away to Calvert up in there. Damon Bailey with a beautiful tip to Calvert Cheney for his 23rd point. And Indiana's on top, 59-37. Across the timeline, backcourt Baldwin goes to Rankin. Rankin drives it left against Nover, fires it up, and missed the shot. The rebound batted away, pulled back out by Nellums, and he scores. Cedric Nellums, first points of the second half, is 15 point, and that's 59-39. Here's Bailey on the right-hand corner. Spin dribble, brings it back outside. Bounces into Pat Graham, goes to Greg Graham, to Calvert Chaney, another long bomb, is good! Calvert Chaney's got 25. He had his foot on the line that time. 61-39. Here's Dewey Williams outside to Nellums. Now to Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick looks inside and Pat Graham fouls him. Pat was reaching in that time trying to strip the ball out of his hands. That's the first foul on Pat. 14.53 in the clock. Dan Northwestern will have the ball. That's team foul one against IU in the second half. The Cats have been called for just two. And we're at the 14.53 mark of the second half of play. Here is Charles Howe making an appearance. He'll replace Kevin Rankin. Indiana's hit six out of eight to start the second half. Well, that's the kind of start you want. Kirkpatrick gets it to Baldwin. Back to Kirkpatrick on the right wing. He holds against Graham. Dribbles it backcourt. Slides it out and gives it to Baldwin left wing. Now again to Kirkpatrick. The Nellums on the right side. He looks low. Can't find anybody. Goes to Williams who turns and fires a 17-footer. And he got it. Dewey Williams scores his first two. 61-41. IU's lead remains 20. Greg Graham brings it down to Damon Bailey. Bailey across the timeline. Again, the, the Wildcats in that zone. Inside and over. Lobs it away to Pat Graham. Puts it up and got it. Pat Graham has got nine. 63-41. Across the timeline, Baldwin goes left to Kirkpatrick. He looks it outside. Then dribbles it back out toward the top of the key. Goes back left to Baldwin. Baldwin on the wing. Down inside to Dewey Williams. He fires and misses this time. Rebound Howell. No good. Tipped up no. Battle for it. Put back up. And Nellum scores and he's fouled. Cedric Nellums gets his 17th point of the ball game. The foul, I believe, on Nover. Well, let's check it. No, it's Pat Graham. So Pat's got his second foul of the ball game. And Nellums will go to the free throw line. Cedric Nellums, 6'5", sophomore, has 17 points in this contest. And he goes to the line with a shot coming as he scored the field goal, a three-point play possibility, and he drills it. 18 now for Cedric Nellums. The Hoosiers are up 63-44 as the Cats cut the lead down to 19. Now Damon Bailey across the timeline. Damon starts it toward the right side. Takes it to the wing, looks in, drives in, baseline, puts it up inside, and, and it's a goaltending call as Bailey will get two out of it. Damon Bailey gets his seventh point and a goaltend. I am sure that's what the whistle... Oh, a foul. No, they don't call the goaltend. They don't call the goaltend. Bob Knight's asking for it, but that's not what they call. So Dewey Williams has called for a personal foul, his first of the ball game, but the Hoosiers don't get the basket out of it. And it'll be Damon Bailey going to the line. Damon had a free throw opportunity in the first half. He missed them both. He fires this one, good. Six now for Bailey. The Hoosiers back on top by 20 at 64-44 as Deion Lee will check into the lineup and Cedric Nellums will sit down for the Wildcats. On that goaltend, Ted Valentine's the one who said, no, it was not goaltend. He hit Hightower ask. Bailey at the line for one more. 
Up it goes, and he got it. Damon hits them both this time. He's got seven and 65-44, the lead back to 21. Here's Northwestern's Dion Lee. Across the timeline, picked up by Bailey. Gets it to Kirkpatrick, who brings it back outside. Kirkpatrick clears left to Baldwin. Baldwin looks underneath, comes out to Howell. Howell looks right, comes left to Baldwin. Baldwin fakes a whistle. What do we got? A foul against Kirkpatrick, it appears. Now, wait a second. Dewey Williams. Deion Lee. So Deion Lee gets his first foul of the ball game. It was offensive, so the Hoosiers get it out of bounds. Greg Graham inbounds to Damon Bailey. Bailey will bring it up. Damon across the timeline to Greg Graham. Graham slides it to the left wing. Down low, it goes to Pat Graham, pulls up inside, puts it up. No, blocked away, and it's picked out of there by Northwestern. Down the floor comes Pat Baldwin. Baldwin takes it inside himself. He puts it up with the left hand and missed it. Nova rebounds, turns it away to Bailey. Back the other way come the Hoosiers. Here's the right side pass to Graham. Down low to Calvert, puts it up and scores! What a move! Calvert saying he's got 27. Great feed from Greg Graham. 67-44. Here's Kirk Patrick. Looks inside. Gets it outside to Howell. Charles Howe goes right to Kirkpatrick, who gives to Baldwin on the wing. He holds high, looks in, slides it right, comes off to Deion Lee, back outside to Baldwin, down low to Howe, a whistle and a foul call against IU. This one may be nailed on Calvert. Chaney is going to be called for using a hip. That'll be his third foul of the ball game. Into the contest comes Brian Evans, and Pat Graham will sit down. 12.31 to go, and Pat Graham sits down with nine points. That's the same number he had in the Minnesota ball game on Saturday. The inbound will come from Northwestern's Kip Kirkpatrick to Charles Howe. Howe right wing, brings it top of the key with a dribble. Goes left with a pass to Deion Lee, back right to Kirkpatrick. Now left to Baldwin, lobs it low to Howe, inside puts it up and in. Charles Howe's fourth point. 67-46. And they allowed Howell to get behind. Nova was fronting him that time, playing him too far in front. Now Indiana against the zone. Greg Graham has it, looks at right, goes left to Bailey. Damon goes to Brian Evans in the corner. He'll bring it back out with a cross court to Graham. Down low to Calvert. He fakes, tried to drive it, and lost it out of bounds. So Calvert Cheney makes a mistake, and timeout is being called with a score. Indiana 67, Northwestern 46. We have 11.58 to go in the basketball game. We'll be back after the 60-second network timeout. Hi, George. Can I borrow a cup of hot water? Out of hot water again? Again. You sure you wouldn't like to borrow more than a cup? No, thanks. I just need to shave. Natural gas means more hot water, faster. It's the ideal energy. Hmm. <sighs> Do you remember those cold nights when you used to haul in firewood and make strange growling noises when you tried to light the fire? <laughs> Do you miss it? I kind of miss the growling noises. Natural gas fireplaces are warm, clean, and efficient. Natural gas is the ideal energy. When my shower ran out of hot water, I had this little trick to keep me warm. I used to sing. Well, I mean, it's, it's safer than dancing, isn't it? Okay, prettier, too. Natural gas technology means more hot water for less. It's the ideal energy for your family. For new information on today's natural gas technology and the ideal energy, call Indiana Gas at 1-800-777-4414. Well, back once again to the Assembly Hall where this Indiana Ball Club leads Northwestern by 21. 11.58 to go in this one, Max. Well, just as Indiana did in the Minnesota game on Saturday, they got off to just a great start. I had them uh, 13 straight. Actually, they were just a 12-point uh, run to start that half after leading 45 to 35. Suddenly, they were up 57 to 35 as they hit uh, six out of their first eight shots. They've now hit eight out of 11 this half. That's almost 73%. Northwestern, five of 11, 45%. For the game now, Indiana is shooting 58%, Northwestern 50%. Wildcat basketball, Dewey Williams will inbound to Patrick Baldwin. The Hoosiers have Cheney, Nover, Bailey, Brian Evans, and Greg Graham. Here's Baldwin bringing it down for the Cats. He goes left side to Kirkpatrick. He looks in, can't find how, drives it back out top of the key, then goes back left. Kirkpatrick tries to slide it in, can't. 
looks for help, gets it down on the wing to Baldwin, who fires a long shot, no good, and the rebound to Brian Evans. He clears to Greg Graham. Down the floor to Calvert. Chaney pulls it out on the wing, gets to Graham. Graham in backcourt holds, looks it down low, can't find Chaney. Then bounces to Madden over. Nover inside to Greg Graham and a give and go. And he put it up and almost got it there. Oh, and it did not, but the Hoosiers draw the foul. Graham will go to the free throw line for a pair. Pretty good play by Greg Graham. That's Williams being nailed on the foul for his second of the ball game. Fifth team foul against the Cats. Hoosiers still not in the one and one. As Greg Graham goes to the line with 16 points in the ball game, and he cans that free one. He has eight points, make that his 17th point of the ball game. And he is three for three from the stripe tonight. Fires number two, nothing but that. 18 now for Greg Graham. The Hoosiers as a team have hit 11 of 17 now in this contest. Here's Pat Ballwood across the timeline, Indiana by 23, 69-46. Right side pass to Kirkpatrick, out to Howell, top of the key, he holds. Gives it back to Kirkpatrick. Down low to Pat Baldwin on the wing right. Back in and a give and go to Kirkpatrick for an easy layup. Kirkpatrick's got six and Indiana got beat in that same play that Northwestern has had their most success with so far this evening. 69-48. Damon Bailey lobs to Greg Graham. This time it's off the backboard. No. Bob Knight again unhappy with that selection of passes. Here's Baldwin and Matt Nover knocked it away. But Baldwin has it blocked by Bailey and they're going to call him for a foul. That looked like all ball, but Ed Hightower says he got him someplace, so the personal against Damon will be his second of the contest. 69-48, Indiana by 21 with 10.44 to go in this ball game, and Cedric Nellums will be checking back in momentarily. At the free throw stripe is Pat Baldwin, who has four points in this game, and he's an outstanding free throw shooter. 87% of his shots drop from the line. He's also got six assists in this game. And that one rolls around, and he got the shooter's roll for his fifth point. He'll have one more shot coming. Averaging 13-4 in Big Ten play, 12-7 overall in the season. Rankin and Nellums both getting set to come in now, and the second one is nothing but net. Six points now for Baldwin. The Hoosiers' lead is cut to 19 at 69-50. Baldwin will sit down, and also sitting down is Dewey Williams. Up the floor, Evans gives to Greg Graham. Greg will bring it across the timeline. Graham, backcourt, starts it to the left side. Pulls up on the wing, still in the dribble, stops, gives it out to Calvert. Calvert fakes, gives it back to Damon. Damon drives it right to Brian Evans. Evans circles it back, looks inside, goes to Greg Graham, top of the key. Greg Graham looks it underneath. And there's a... Graham fires at the Calvert, baseline move. Calvert drives in, pulls it back out, and the whistle blows, and we get a foul. I think Kevin Rankin may got nailed on this one. It'll be Rankin called for his second foul of the ball game. And a 16 foul, I believe Indiana will get it out of bounds. Damon Bailey will trigger it in. Bailey looks, fires backcourt to Calvert. Chaney, down low to Bailey. Bailey on the wing, back out to Calvert Chaney. He looks right, dribbles it out, gives to Greg Graham. Graham now being harassed, gives to Bailey. Bailey back out to Greg. Greg looks in the corner, brings it back outside. Now bounces into Nover. Matt drives, pulls up with the scoop, and it's blocked, but it's goaltending. Matt Nover will get his eighth point of the ball game. Good drive to the hole by Nover. And the Hoosiers' lead is back up to 21 at 71-50. 9.59 left. Across the timeline with the ball. Backcourt, Kip Kirkpatrick drives it right, comes back left with the pass, goes to Deion Lee. Down low to Rankin. Rankin fires it out to Howell. He goes right to Nellums. Nellums in the corner to Lee, driving it inside, kicks it out to Howell, fires the shot up and missed it. Rebound Rankin inside, puts it back up, and he gets the shot to fall, but it's an offensive foul. It won't count. Kevin Rankin used the forearm for his third personal, and it's going to give Indiana the ball back out of bounds. So Greg Ramble inbound it. The Hoosiers have Calvert Chaney on the board with 27 tonight. 9.37 to go on this one. Here's Bailey. Left side to Calvert. Drives the baseline. Pulls up and gives to Brian Evans, but he lost the handle. Here's Northwestern on the break the other way. Here's Nellums. Pulls up and fires it in. Cedric Nellums scores his 20th point. 71-52, the lead cut to 19. Bailey goes to Graham. Graham looks right, 
Dribbles at one time, looks underneath, passes to Damon. Damon goes to Evans on the left side. Brian back out to Damon. Bailey goes to Graham. Graham looks, drives it right, pulls up, clears it to Bailey. He drives inside. Scoop shot court. Damon Bailey's got nine. 73-52. Here's Howell the other way for the Cats. Backcourt pass to Kirkpatrick. Kip drives it toward the right side, comes back to the left at the top of the key. He's still in the move. Gives it out to Howell. Howell left side to Deion Lee. Lee drives it baseline, pulls up, fires no good. Rebound comes off to Greg Graham. Graham on a break. Four, three on one, four on one. Here's Graham to Calvert. Slam dunk! Shaney's got 29. 75-52. Indiana's lead back up to 23 with 8.28 to go. Across the timeline, this is Kirkpatrick. Right side to Lee. Lee. Back to Rankin, down low to Howell, turns around, jump hook, no good, rebound battle, Nover's got it. Matt pulls it out of there, and he's fouled by Howell. Matt Nover with the board, and he gets fouled by Howell, and that'll send Nover to the free throw line. Here comes Chris Reynolds off the Hoosier bench, and he'll check in with 8.13 to go as Damon Bailey will sit down. Bob Knight slaps his hands together and pats Bailey on the behind as Damon may have finished his night's work. He's got nine. Indiana's absolutely sensational second half shooting, 11 of 14 right now, 78.6. Northwestern, on the other hand, now just 7 of 18 this half, 38-9. Well, Madden over with eight points in the ball game. Can jump that lead to 25 if he hits them both. The first is in the air, and it's no good. He misses the one-and-one -one opportunity, and it's Northwestern with the board. Down the floor, Baldwin goes right side to Kirkpatrick. Back out to Rankin, a 16-foot jump shot and misses, and the rebound comes off to Reynolds, and he is fouled by Baldwin. Patrick Baldwin with a slap from behind picks up his first foul of the ball game, and again the Hoosiers will go to the strike. So Indiana will go to the line, and Chris Reynolds, I believe, will be the man going to the free throw stripe with eight minutes and one second to go in this basketball game. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. You're listening to Joy 103, where Don Kennedy is your host for Big Band Jump. That's every Sunday night at 6 o'clock. Chris Reynolds at the line for a one-and-one. One. The shot is in the air. He got it. And Chris has his third point of the ball game. One of two from the line tonight, and he has one more opportunity. Eight minutes, one second left in this one as the Hoosiers look to wrap up at least a tie for the Big Ten title. The second toss in the air is no good. The rebound, Brian Evans. Fakes back up. No good. Blocked away. It's knocked away out of bounds. It'll belong to IU. And time is being called with a score. Indiana 76, Northwestern 52, 7.57 to go on this one. Back after the 60-second network timeout. Now, Madam Yolanda will read your palm. Oh, you're a farmer. You grow beans. Soybeans. I feel a powerful presence. Two strong forces working together to solve all your problems. Could it be tricep herbicide? Are your problems broadleaf weeds and grasses? Yes. Like pigweeds, foxtails, cockleburb? Yeah. Ah, then the answer is tricep. Made with scepter, herbicide, and trifland herbicide for the most power you can pack in a jug. All that's in my palm? No, in your tricep brochure. Oh, one more thing. See your cyanamid address center dealer. Read and follow label directions. Say, neighbors, that one of those new snapper lawn tractors I see in your garage. You betcha. This baby is built tough and talk about power up. <laughs> a Briggs IC with 12 horses, peerless 5-speed gear drive, 30-inch cutting deck with 6 cutting heights, 32-inch turning radius, 2-year limited warranty. Boy, you must have run into some cash to buy this snapper tractor a couple of months before the grass needs to be cut. Oh, not at all. I just use snap credit so I don't have to start paying for it until October. Besides, with snapper tractors starting at $14.99, these babies aren't going to last very long down at the snapper dealer. You know, neighbor, I think I'll go visit that snapper dealer before the spring rush starts. Well, here at the Assembly Hall, the Hoosier Ball Club it leads by 24 points, 76-52, 7.57 left in the ballgame. Well, Indiana with its largest lead of the night now, 24 points. They've had a couple of 23-point leads, but they are doing some outstanding shooting, although they just dropped with a couple of misses just now, but nevertheless still shooting 73% in this half, 56% for the game. They now have taken Northwestern uh, below 500 for the game, 48.4. Reynolds, Cheney, Greg Graham, Matt Nover, and Brian Evans, the lineup for the Hoosiers, and Indiana will have it, leading by 24. 
The inbound to Reynolds to Graham. Back to Chris. Chris inside and over. Down low to Calvert. Slam look. Cheney's got 31 now. Indiana leads at 78-52. They are stretching it out. Their biggest lead of the ball game at 26. Nellums with the ball. Looks at right side. Outside to Rankin. Rankin down low inside. The pass is deflected away out of bounds. It's going to belong to IU as Eric Simpson in for the first time tonight. Couldn't hang on. 6-1 junior out of Chicago, Illinois. Here is Reynolds across the timeline. The Cats have turned it over 12 times in this ball game. Here's Reynolds to Greg Graham. Graham starts it to the left, moves it to the wing, goes baseline, is cut off, and he's fouled. This foul call goes on Baldwin, who has picked up his second of the contest. Greg Graham will go to the line with 18 points to his credit tonight. Max, this young man has really done a great job of shooting the basketball in Big Ten play. He is second in both field goal percentage and free throw percentage and tops in three-point field goal percentage. Well, he is shooting 49% on three-point shots. That is outstanding. When you factor that in to what it would be compared to two-point shooting, I mean, that's a lot of points. And I don't know what he is tonight, but it's got to be close to perfect. He's got four three-pointers in this one. And that free throw drops through. He's got 19. So he's got his 19th point of the ball game, looking to become the second player in the Hoosier squad to get to 20 this evening. And he missed it. And the rebound comes away to Baldwin. Down the floor, Baldwin across the timeline. The Hoosiers' lead is up to 27 at 79-52. To Rankin, top of the key. Inside PP to Pat Baldwin for an easy layup. Baldwin again gets a pretty easy basket. And that's his eighth point of the ball game. Here is Chris Reynolds, who goes right side of the wing. Looks inside. Brings it out to Brian Evans. Evans, top of the key, goes left to Calvert. Back out to Greg Graham, who fakes. On the dribble, Greg looks low, finds Calvert again inside, up and in. Calvert Chaney with a tremendous first step has got his 33rd point. Now nah, it's 81-54. And here is Kirkpatrick outside to Rayford. Rayford top of the key. He looks in, comes back to Kirkpatrick who goes to Baldwin, lobs it to Kevin Rankin who turns, looks, fires, and missed it. And the rebound to Brian Evans. Evans had it knocked away, scrambles for it. A battle still picked up by Greg Graham. Graham across the timeline. Graham, top of the key, goes left the, and stops his move, goes to Brian Evans. Now low to Calvert. Chaney on the right wing, pulls it back out to Brian Evans on the baseline. Inside to Nover, turn around, fade away. He lost the handle, comes out to Chris Reynolds. Reynolds, top of the key, goes right to Brian Evans. Evans looks at low, drives it left, pulls up, had it knocked away, but a foul. And Brian Evans is going to go to the free throw line. Well, Evans hasn't scored in this ball game, and he had just two points against Minnesota. So it's been a while for Brian Evans to get anything going scoring-wise. I've sensed he's been passed up a lot of shots tonight. I don't know whether somebody's talked to him or he's just decided not to take some shots, but he's had some openings that look like shots that he'd have taken in the past. Well, now we've got a timeout being called. The score, Indiana 81. Northwestern 54 with 605 to go in this contest and I believe that's our last uh, television time out of the game so we'll be back after the 60 second break this is the Indiana University Basketball Network have you ever thought about how much work your brakes do every day? You know, the average set of brakes stops your car safely over 100 times daily, and that's not counting when you slow down. Your safety, as well as the safety of your family, depends on your brakes. That's why Jim's Tune-Up take a great deal of pride in providing the very best in brake service. All brake jobs include a complete four-wheel check and turning of the drums or rotors if necessary. And you can even get pads that are guaranteed for as long as you own that car. See Jim's Tune-Up in Monticello today on First Street under the big smokestack. This is Rick Mount. For years, parents, players, coaches have asked me to teach them to shoot a basketball like I do. Basically, I have taught myself using a procedure I call the Mount Method of Simplified Shooting. At my shooting camp on St. Joseph's campus in Rensselaer, Indiana, I teach this method to all boys and girls enrolled. All campers receive my instructional video on shooting plus a video of them shooting with my comments on improvements. For a free brochure, call 219-583-3940. That's 219-583-3940. Assembly Hall, we're in Indiana with six minutes and five seconds to go. It's an 81-54 victory, or not victory, but lead over the Northwestern Wildcats. Don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves here. Well, I got a feeling that you're going to be right, but perhaps we better wait until the game is over. Indiana's only downside tonight, Don, again, is their foul shooting. 
They're hitting just 59%, 13 of 22. They have certainly been up and down when it comes to foul shooting this year. One game they are sensational, other games they are really struggling. Greg Graham has sat down, as has Matt Nover. Graham with 19 points tonight. And here's a free throw by Brian Evans as he connects for his first point of the ball game. So Brian has one, and he has an opportunity for one more. He can make it a 29-point game and missed it, and the rebound is coming off to Cedric Nellums to Pat Baldwin. Pat Knight has checked in for the Hoosiers, as has Todd Leary. Chris Reynolds is in there along with Brian Evans and Cheney. Here's Nellums who misses the shot, partially blocked, I think, by Calvert, and Brian Evans comes up with it. Down the floor to Leary. Leary in backcourt, slows on the left side, gives to Pat Knight on the wing. Outside, threw it away, and here's a scramble, and it's picked up by Kirkpatrick. Pat Knight with a bad pass that time. Now, Kirkpatrick slides it to the left, bounces to Pat Baldwin, who turns, looks for help, clears to Kirkpatrick. He gets it right side to Nellums. Nellums pumps up a long jump shot and got it. And they're going to give him a three, but he stepped in the line. Cedric Nellums is going to get credit for a three there, and I think his foot was on the line when he let it go. 23 for Nellums. 82-57 the count. Here's Calvert Chaney. Baseline drive. Pulls up, fires, missed it, but he drew the foul. And Nellums, I believe, will be nailing his fourth. Calvert Chaney has 33 in this ballgame. Calvert, career high is 36. He gained it in the championship ball game of the NIT against Seton Hall. He is 33 right now. I think it's the fifth or sixth time this year he's had over 30. Well, he's hit all seven shots that he's taken this half. He hasn't missed one yet. And he's at the line here where he has missed a couple. He is two for four tonight from the stripe. Missed his first two, but hit his second two, and that one drops in. He's got 34 points. So Calvert Chaney, the career scoring leader for Big Ten, gained it tonight with his first 10 points of the contest, and he cans another. He's got 35. 84-57 is the score. 5-12 left in the ball game, and across the timeline, Northwestern, they got another new face. In fact, a couple in. Matt Purdy is back in there now. Brett Yonke is also there. And here's Dewey Williams outside to Purdy, who goes left to Kirkpatrick, who goes to Yankee, who gets it into Williams, who fires it up, no, and the rebound, Brian Evans. He clears to Reynolds. Reynolds down the floor in a hurry, gets it to Leary. Baseline shot is good! He got it to roll in! Todd Leary's first two. 86-57, the Hoosiers by 29. Baldwin, right side pass goes to Kirkpatrick. Outside to Williams. Dewey, top of the key, goes back to Kirkpatrick. Now... Cross courts it over to Yankee. Yankee on the left side of the circle, got it by Cheney. Gets it out to Baldwin. Baldwin looks in, goes right side. It comes off to Kirkpatrick, who fires it up and got it. Kirkpatrick has his eighth point. 86 59. 417 left. Here is Chris Reynolds. And Bob Knight calls timeout. And I think Calvert Cheney is going to end his night's action here. So we'll keep it right here. Calvert. Will he sit down? He will. Time has been called. And Danny Dockich is being given some instructions. I think we may see a presentation here. I'm going to change microphones back, so go ahead and work here. Uh, okay, Don. I'm sure that uh, they've decided now's the time uh, to do something on behalf of Calvert Cheney. He's had 30 career, uh, 30 point games 12 times in his career. Center court. <laughs> A little loud there. We're all right now, I think. We are going to have a presentation of some kind here. The game ball is going to go to Calvert Shady. And Ed Hightower, the official for tonight's game, gives him the basketball, and Calvert gets the ball from Ed Hightower and gets a standing ovation. And he also gets hugs from all the players as he comes to the sideline. As Calvert Cheney, with 35 points tonight, has ended his night's work and gets the game ball from official Ed Hightower. Well, he is 13 of 18 from the field. He's hit all seven shots that he's taken in the second half. Six rebounds, one assist, one steal, and he had two block shots. That is a pretty good evening's work for Al Calvert Cheney, the fine senior out of Evansville, Indiana. And Calvert being 
is back out there now, and I think he's just out there for a moment. And the fans now standing up and chanting Calvert. And Calvert out of the floor is going to be replaced, I think, by Pat Graham momentarily. Here's Todd Leary, and he'll inbound it. Finally gets it to Pat Knight. Back to Todd. Drives it in, scoops it up, no, but a whistle and a foul. And Pat Graham now, I believe, will check into the ball game. So Pat will check in, and I'm sure it'll be for Calvert, and he'll get another standing ovation. <laughs> Calvert Saney, a pat on the behind from Bob Knight. Shaking hands with all of his teammates, the coaching staff, Alan Henderson over there, and Todd Lindemann, as Leary fires the free one good. Todd Leary with his third point of the ball game, and Max, this guy hasn't missed all year. He's now 20 of 20 from big in the Big Ten as far as free throw shooting. Uh, he's only missed two in the whole year. And he bangs home another. He's got four. 88, 59. He's 21 and 21. And up the floor, across the timeline. Here is Baldwin in backcourt. Gets it off to Dewey Williams, who turns and clears it away to Kirkpatrick. Down low, fires it up, missed the shot. Rebound batted away. Kirkpatrick's got it. Back up he goes, and he's fouled. So the foul call goes against IU. And this one is, uh, I believe, on Brian Evans. That'll be his second of the ball game. And he'll put Northwestern at the free throw line. Well, Kirk Patrick's been a good shooter this half also. In fact, for the whole game, he's hit all four shots he's taken prior to that last miss he had just prior to this foul. Kirk Patrick at the line with eight points. And he fires up this free one. It is good. He's got nine. He'll have one more shot covered. 3.55 to go. 88 to 60 to score. The Hoosiers by 28. And since this second half got underway, there's been no doubt. The second toss, also good. Kip Kirkpatrick with his 10th point of the game. It's 88-61. The Hoosiers on the attack. Reynolds across the timeline. Gives to Pat Knight. Pat looks it inside, goes to Todd Leary. Leary goes to Brian Evans. Evans outside to Pat Knight, gives it up to, or rather, Graham to Pat Knight, not to Chris Reynolds. He drives in, turns around, puts the pass to Pat Graham up in there. Pat Graham has got 11 points now. And it's 90-61, a nice speed by Chris Reynolds. With the ball is Eric Simpson, right side pass to Brett Yonke, and Yonke back outside to Matt Purdy. Down low to Williams, turn around, jump shot, good. Dewey Williams scores his fourth point. 90-63, Indiana by 17. Here's Reynolds, takes it inside, pulls it back out, gives to Pat Knight, he drives it left, he pulls it back out to Todd Leary. Leary now, back to Pat Knight, he drives it left. Hoosier fans want Pat Knight to take the shot, but he won't. Here's Leary, takes it, starts to the left side, gives to Brian Evans on the wing. Brian, inside pass to Pat Graham, Graham inside, lost the handle out of bounds. It'll belong to the Wildcats. 90-63 IU by 17. We have 2.53 to go in the basketball game. That's only the ninth turnover Indiana's had tonight. Purdy gives to Simpson, and Simpson brings it up for the Cats. Across the timeline, goes right side to Deion Lee. Outside of Dewey Williams, back it comes to Simpson on the left wing. Not a Lee again, top of the key. Right to Yankee. Yankee looks inside, comes back to Purdy, top of the lane. He goes back to Yankee. He lets a three-pointer fly and got it. Brett Yankee, a freshman out of Burnsville, Minnesota, has his first points of the ball game. 90-66. Chris Reynolds fires it up and got it, but the shot will not count as he is fouled. And it'll be Williams or he, nope, it's actually Simpson who gets nailed on the personal, his first of the ball game. So it'll be Chris Reynolds going to the stripe with three points tonight. Chris hitting 69% of his shots from the line in Big Ten play, 65% for the season, but tonight he's one of three. And Chris now to the stripe, fires up this one, got it. His fourth of the ball game, and he gets two shots here, the 10th team foul committed by the Wildcats. The Hoosiers now 19 of 29 for this contest. 91-66 score, Indiana by 25. They won the first meeting between these two clubs by 22. And the second one is short. The rebound comes off to Yankee for Northwestern. Now back up the floor comes Simpson. Simpson across the timeline. 
Simpson, right side pass goes to Purdy. Matt Purdy looks, drives it to the wing, stops, cross courts it off to Yankee. Yankee on the left wing, has it stolen away by Pat Graham. Pat drives it down the floor, drives it baseline to Leary. Leary fires it back to Pat Graham, who goes left to Pat Knight. He drives it inside, lost the handle, and Merrick Simpson comes up with a steal. Back the other way come the Cats. Pat just tried to drive it inside that time and lost the handle. Here is Simpson to Yankee. Yankee back out to Purdy. Purdy fires and hits a three-pointer. Matt Purdy's first three of the night, his first points of this ball game. It's 91-69. Lead is dissipated to 22. Here is Reynolds to Evans to Pat Knight. He drives it off to Leary. Leary fires a three-pointer and got it. Todd Leary has got seven. Indiana 94, Northwestern 69 with 124 to go. Backcourt Simpson goes to Purdy. Top of the key right goes to Lee. Lee on the wing. Back out to Yankee. Yankee drives it right. Pulls up. Gives to Lee who fires another three. It's no good. Rebound. Batted away to Pat Graham to Chris Reynolds. Three on two. Reynolds takes it in low. Right. Brings it back out. Gives the ball to Brian Evans. Evans gives to Leary. Another three on the way. This time no good. And the rebound is to Deion Lee. Lee the other way for the Cats. 56 seconds left. Deion Lee, right wing, gets it inside to deflect it away, and Pat Knight's got it. Pat Knight across the timeline. Takes it right inside, past this Chris Reynolds up and in. Nice feed. Chris Reynolds gets his sixth point of the ball game. 96-69 and 40 seconds all that's left in this one. Indiana's going to tie, no less than tie, for the Big Ten title here tonight. Yankee baseline, fires it up. Short, no good, rebound, Pat Knight. Pat drives down the floor, two on one. Pat Knight... Passes to Reynolds, and we get a blocking foul. No, an offensive foul on Pat Knight. So Pat Knight gets nailed on the foul. That'll be his first of the ball game. And Tony Lang will come in for Northwestern, a 5'8 senior out of Franklin, Indiana. Max, we've seen this young man just get mop-up duty the last few years, but... I think he gets excited every time he comes into the game for IU. Well, I talked to him briefly. He was born here in Bloomington. His parents were graduate students here. Tommy Creamer is also in for the Cats. Here's Ling. Inside pass to Purdy. Has it stripped away by Reynolds. 12 seconds to go. Chris down the floor. Right side to Leary. Todd cross courts to Pat Knight. He fakes. He drives. He shoots. And he scores! Pat Knight's first two of the game. And it is over. And the crowd loving every minute of it. The Hoosiers, 98, Northwestern, 69, and everybody in the ball club scores points tonight. But the big guy, Calvert Chaney, breaks the career scoring record for Big Ten and IU as Calvert has 35 in this one. The final again is 98-69, Indiana. And we'll be back to recap it for you after we pause for the 60-second network timer. The game's heating up, Bob. Look at that. I don't believe it, Bob. The coach is bringing in a Canon NP6060 from copyright. A Canon NP6060, Bob. The copier that shoots a copy a second. Holds 6,100 sheets of paper. And has copyright's exclusive total lifetime coverage. With service in four hours or they pay you. And a lifetime money back guarantee. No wonder copyright's Indiana's biggest. Copyright's the smart choice. That's the Canon NP6060 from copyright. Put it on your office team. Call copyright. And do it today, if not sooner. University Broadcasting Company is proud to bring you IU basketball. University Broadcasting serves Indiana with the finest in sports radio. University Broadcasting Company operates two sports networks and seven radio stations, including WHHH, Hoosier 96 in Indianapolis, WBWB, B97 in Bloomington, WGCT in Ellettsville, and WAZY, Z96 in Lafayette. University Broadcasting Company is Indiana's radio broadcasting company. Thanks for listening. Now on sale. Reminding you while the story is being told also that tomorrow at Saturday, Indiana University will... Well, back once again at the Assembly Hall where Indiana tonight picks up their 26th win of the year against just three defeats and their 15th victory in Big Ten play against one loss. That 15th triumph guarantees them no less than a tie for the Big Ten championship here this evening. And now the Wildcats are at 2-13 and 13 on the year in conference play and 7-17 and 17 overall. But Indiana tonight wanted 
to come up with a career performance or at least a performance that gave Calvert Cheney that career scoring championship and he did not disappoint. He scored the first seven points of the ball game and then waited a while before he finally broke the record but he comes up with a perfect almost a perfect evening from the standpoint of Hoosier fans a 35 point performance in this career uh, record breaking effort by Calvert Cheney here this evening. So again Cheney with a unbelievable effort one more time and that's the 12th time in his career that he scored 30 points or more and the fifth time this season so an outstanding job by Cheney and he allows the entire crowd to walk out of here tonight with a smile on their face as they watched history in the making. Let's look at the individual scoring in the ball game tonight for Northwestern. Their leading scorer was Cedric Nellums who had an excellent performance. 23 points in this ball game this evening. 13 of those came in the first half. Also in double figures for the Wildcats, Kevin Rankin had 10 and Kip Kirkpatrick had 10. Down the list it was Pat Baldwin who had eight Four points apiece for Charles Howell, T.J. Rayford, Dewey Williams, then three points for Matt Purdy, three points for Brett Yonke. Also playing but not scoring, Tony Ling, Tommy Creamer, Eric Simpson, and Dion Lee. So again, the top scorers tonight for Northwestern, Cedric Nellums, 23, and 10 each for Kip Kirkpatrick and Kevin Rankin. For Indiana tonight, the Hoosiers, of course, led by... Calvert Cheney, 35 points this evening, 19 for Greg Graham, 11 for Pat Graham, 9 for Damon Bailey, 8 for Matt Nover, 7 for Todd Leary, 6 for Chris Reynolds, 2 for Pat Knight, and 1 for Brian Evans. So everybody for the Hoosiers tonight was able to score, and they had three players in double figures, including Calvert Cheney's 35, 19 for Greg Graham, and 11 for Pat Graham. We'll be back to take a look at the team statistics on this contest and a breakdown of the individual stats as well. But first, let's pause for the 60-second break. This is the Indiana University Basketball Network. I stopped in a muffler shop the other day to see about their so-called guaranteed muffler service. What I saw was this guy offering me the same muffler he had just put on a 1959 Packard. Come on, not all cars are the same, and neither are their muffler systems. A muffler and exhaust system is an important part of your car's performance. At Jim's Tune-Up Center, their muffler service might cost you a little more, but when you leave, you're going to have a big A muffler designed especially for your car or light truck, and it's going to be warranted for as long as you own that car. That's Jim's Tune-Up Center in Monticello on 1st Street under the big smokestack. This is Rick Mount. For years, parents, players, coaches have asked me to teach them to shoot a basketball like I do. Basically, I have taught myself using a procedure I call the Mount Method of Simplified Shooting. At my shooting camp on St. Joseph's campus in Rensselaer, Indiana, I teach this method to all boys and girls enrolled. All campers receive my instructional video on shooting plus a video of them shooting with my comments on improvements. For a free brochure, call 219-583-3940. That's 219-583-3940. And Max, look at those team stats in tonight's ball game. Once again, Indiana shoots some outstanding basketball. They had one uh, small part of the game in which they had some problems hitting. In fact, uh, at that point, their shooting dropped down all the way to 39%. But for the game, they end up shooting 60.3%. That may be close to their best for the year. We'll have to check that one out. They shot 48.6% in the first half. In the second half, they missed only five shots out of 23 they took. That's 18 for 23, 78%. That buries the other team when you shoot that kind of basketball. They finish up 35 of 58, 60.3. Northwestern, which had an outstanding shooting early in the game, finished the first half 51.7, but in the second half, Indiana's defense held them to 41.9 on 13 of 31. They finished the game 28 of 60, 46.7 but that is a considerable improvement over the 39% they shot in the opening game against Indiana. Indiana once again, outstanding shooting from three-point range. Nine of 19, 47%. That's almost hitting half the three-point shots you take. They were just five of 13 in the first half, but they were four of six in the second half. Northwestern uh, sc shooting a much better percentage than their season-long uh, record would indicate. They hit four out of eight tonight as they hit three of five in the second half. 
From the free throw line, Indiana struggled again tonight, hitting just 19 of 30. They hit only 6 of 11 in the first half, improved after 13 of 19 in the second half, but for the game, 19 of 30. For Northwestern, they shot only 12 free throws, hitting on 9 of them, 75%. Rebounding tonight, Indiana with 36 rebounds compared to 29 for Northwestern as they control the boards both ways. Turnovers, 15 turnovers against Northwestern, 11 against Indiana. Well, we've talked about Calvert Chaney and his great shooting. He was absolutely perfect in the field in the second half, 7-7, seven of seven, to go with some 6-11 of 11 shooting in the first half. He finished tonight 13 of 18 from the field. He was 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 of 5 from three-point range. Matt Nover finishes the night 3 of 4. Greg Graham finishes 6 of 11. He was 3 of 4 in the second half. Damon Bailey was three of six. Chris Reynolds hit both shots that he took. Todd Leary finishes the night two of five. Pat Graham five of night. Only Brian Evans failed to score from the field as he was 0 for two. And Pat Knight hit his only shot. For Northwestern, Charlie Nellum seven of 12 from the field tonight. He had a good second half, three of five. Charlie Howell two of six. Kevin Rankin was five of 13 from the field tonight. Patrick Baldwin three of six. Deion Lee missed all five shots he took, and Purdy one of two. Kirkpatrick hit the first four he took, finished four of five. Yankee was, was uh, one of two, and Dewey Williams was two of four from the field. Well, we mentioned that Cheney, in addition to his scoring, also played a good board game, six rebounds. He was one short of the leader. Damon Bailey was the leading rebounder for Indiana with seven. Cheney had six rebounds. He had an assist, a steal, and two block shots. Matt Nover had five rebounds. He had three assists. Bailey, in addition to his seven rebounds, had six assists tonight as he has now uh, had 27 in his last five games. That as an average of 5.4 assists per game. Chris Reynolds had a rebound. He had four assists. He had two steals. Greg Graham had four rebounds, three assists. He had a steal. Pat Graham had three rebounds and a steal. Brian Evans played at five rebounds. Todd Leary had an assist. Pat Knight had a rebound, and he had two assists. Leading rebounder for Northwestern, they had Deion Lee with six. Nellums had five. Rankin, who is their big man, could finish with only three rebounds tonight, and I'm sure that had to hurt the Northwestern cause. So that's a look at things as Indiana wins it easily tonight by 29, and the exciting points came in the first half as... Uh, Calvert Cheney opened up, getting seven of Indiana's first nine points. His record-breaking shot, as far as the Big Ten concerned, came at the 6-12 mark when he hit a three-pointer that put Indiana up by a 26-25 margin, a case where Northwestern never got closer than that again throughout the game. They opened the second half with 12 straight points. After leading by 10, suddenly they were up by 22. And after that, it was all downhill as far as Northwestern was concerned as the Hoosiers win it going away 98-69. to So Indiana now stands 26-3 and for the year, as we said earlier, 15-1 and of the Big Ten. They have tied for the Big Ten championship. They can gain no less than a tie and obviously can win it outright if they beat Michigan State next Wednesday. The Hoosiers, uh, as we indicated before, coming into this game with two uh, things that they wanted to accomplish tonight, the first of which is winning the uh, Big Ten title, which they have accomplished that at least for no less than a tie, and the second, of course, Calvert Chaney to break the career scoring record in the Big Ten, which he did early on in the first half and finishes the night with 35. Well, this is the 11th Big Ten Championship now for Bob Knight in his 22 years, and it's the 19th now in school history, and that makes it the most of any Big Ten in the conference history. It breaks that 18 tie they had with Purdue, and they last won their Big Ten Championship. So Indiana took a gigantic step here tonight, winning at least a share of the Big Ten, and it's their 19th in the school history. And tonight, Indiana, for the fifth time this season, shot over 60%. 6.03 this evening, which ties... The uh, St. John's performance, their best of the year, of course, against Western Michigan, 65%. Uh, but tonight, they equal uh, St. John's effort, which is the lowest of the 60% efforts that they've had. But nevertheless, 60% is a great shooting percentage. You'll take it every ballgame if you can get it. Well, and 
great, great second half. That's the thing that did it, Don. So, again, the final 98-69, Indiana on top of Northwestern. Tonight's ball game brought to you in part by Indiana Gas for efficiency, comfort, and a cleaner environment. Natural gas, your best energy value season after season. By your local Napa Auto Parts store. Napa because there are no unimportant parts. By your local Amico Certicare Repair Centers. By the Hoosier Lottery, where you've got to play to win. By State Farm Insurance and the more than 500 State Farm agents throughout Indiana. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By the real estate professionals of the 121 Century 21 offices in Indiana. By True Value Hardware. Got a tough job? You can do it with True Value Hardware stores. By Squadron Herbicide for a higher level of soybean weed control. And by Indiana's Rural Electric Cooperatives, consumer-owned for service excellence. Our special thanks tonight to our studio producer, oh my goodness, Ed, I don't even know your last name, but I appreciate the job you did tonight, and we'll find out during the break and pass it on later. To our statistician, Joe Smith, now this is Don Fisher from Max Gerwin inviting you to stay tuned next for the IU Post Game Show. We'll be rejoining you in just a couple of minutes. So long, everybody. Exciting Indiana University basketball on the area sports leader, WNJY, Joy 103. Today's game is sponsored by Pepsi-Cola and your local Pepsi-Cola bottler. Pepsi-Cola, gotta have it. And by Jim's Tune-Up Center on 1st Street in Monticello behind Hooks. WNJY Joy 103 is connecting on three-pointers all the time with a full slate of college basketball broadcasts and Carroll and White County High School games, too, as called by the award-winning Joy 103 sports team. Sports is always presented professionally here on WNJY Joy 103. Why go anywhere else? Must be a Had our home completely renovated and replaced the heating and cooling with the best system we could find. Must be a Lennox. Put in this new year-round heat pump. Should have done it sooner. And our bills are really down. Must be a Lennox. Got this year-round heat pump. Dependable, fantastic. Not a day of trouble since ever. Must be a Lennox. You know, that's quite a slogan. Whenever I hear it, I automatically think of Joe Hildebrandt Electric Plumbing and Heating. Why? Because Joe Hildebrand has been offering the best and high efficiency Linux furnaces, air conditioners, and heat pump for years. Now, you know, they really perform, and their reliability is second to none. So, when you hear the jingle, think of Joe Hildebrand Electric Plumbing and Heating, and of course, the high efficiency of Linux equipment. Full service, free estimate, and don't forget that old Joe Hildebrand can install exactly what you need. Then you'll be able to say... Must be a Lennox. This is Rick Mount. For years, parents, players, coaches have asked me to teach them to shoot a basketball like I do. Basically, I have taught myself using a procedure I call the Mount Method of Simplified Shooting. At my shooting camp on St. Joseph's campus in Rensselaer, Indiana, I teach this method to all boys and girls enrolled. All campers receive my instructional video on shooting plus a video of them shooting with my comments on improvements. For a free brochure, call 219-583-3940. That's 219-583-3940. Have you ever thought about how much work your brakes do every day? You know, the average set of brakes stops your car safely over 100 times daily, and that's not counting when you slow down. Your safety, as well as the safety of your family, depends on your brakes. That's why Jim's Tune-Up take a great deal of pride in providing the very best in brake service. All brake jobs include a complete four-wheel check and turning of the drums or rotors if necessary. And you can even get pads that are guaranteed for as long as you own that car. See Jim's Tune-Up in Monticello today on First Street under the big smokestack. This game show review of tonight's ball game in which Indiana wins over Northwestern 98-69. to The Hoosiers guaranteeing themselves no less than a tie for the Big Ten title. And as always, our guest in the postgame, Norm Ellenberger. Norm, I know that uh, there was nothing bigger coming into tonight's ball game than getting the Big Ten title, but there was a secondary thing in there about Calvert Chaney, and uh, obviously uh, everybody in the sidelines was high-fiving as he got off to a hot start with that first seven points. Didn't, uh, didn't take Calvert long to have everybody figure out that he was going to get that baby. You know, that, that thing wasn't going to last very long. And... Uh, you know, it's uh, it, it, it's interesting what what adrenaline will do to to people, and and uh, with with the weather the way that it was, and and the crowd was late getting in. Usually, when we come out on the court, you can look up, and and most everything has got some people in it, and there are a lot of empty seats looking back. And I and uh, usually on a night like this, why things are kind of flat, but. Uh, uh, geez, everybody was ready for this one. I think he got the crowd into it early, and I don't think they ever really left. 
No, no, I think they stayed right, <laughs> stayed right with it the whole way. And then coach did a great thing, you know, uh, stopping the game after it was over with, you know, and and giving him the ball and so forth. And I thought that was that was wonderful. That. Uh, that made goosebumps all up and down that uh, that row over there of players. I know that. Well, Norm, I saw you cheerleading in that, that first couple of minutes. Yeah, oh, are man. Aware, are you aware wild. you were doing God, that? I, yeah, I sure was. That was <laughs> that. Uh, you know, you need to win this game, and if if, if Calvert's going to go get 30, why well, we're going to win this game, and so <laughs> that that's why we were cheering that there. Obviously, one of the other positives in this contest, uh, especially the great second half start again. Uh, this is a second straight ball game, and the first five minutes you've simply taken a ball club out of it. Well, we hit, hit some shots, and uh, you know that's the key. You know, especially especially uh, 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 since uh, Henderson went down, uh, we got to make shots, and and uh, you know we were able to do that. We we didn't get the ball inside very well against the zone and the, about the only big change that coach Knight made at, at halftime was to get the ball down in the middle against that zone and then kick it back out and and uh, geez we did that really well and Nover uh, Nover had three I, how many assists do you have three assists tonight? Uh, let's see uh, Matt had uh, three assists that that is a career record <laughs> for Nover for uh, that's a career for a season <laughs> well you know we, we spent we spent all the first part of this year i worked with him a whole lot just getting to catch it let alone pass it right. see and, and now we got him catching it and passing it so it's uh things uh heck we we, we may win another game here somewhere <laughs> along the line we'll be back with more with noah bellenberger on our post game show in a moment but first let's pause for the 60 second time out <laughs> For years, you've run on the same premium gasoline. You didn't see a clear reason to switch. Until now. Introducing new improved Amoco Ultimate. Amoco Ultimate? The only premium gasoline that's crystal clear. Refined an extra step to remove harmful impurities called PNAs. PNAs? Harmful impurities that can rob your engine of performance and contribute to hydrocarbon exhaust emissions. Impurities other premiums leave in. Crystal clear Amoco Ultimate. New in this area. You expect more from a leader. University Broadcasting Company is proud to bring you IU basketball. University Broadcasting serves Indiana with the finest in sports radio. University Broadcasting Company operates two sports networks and seven radio stations, including WHHH, Hoosier 96 in Indianapolis, WBWB, B97 in Bloomington, WGCT in Ellettsville, and WAZY, Z96 in Lafayette. University Broadcasting Company is Indiana's radio broadcasting company. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Once, once again on the IU Post Game Show, uh, Indiana winner tonight over Northwestern. Norm Mellenberger, our guest. Norm, one of the things I wanted to ask you tonight, again, Northwestern got a lot of easy inside shots on the give-and-go play. Uh, they they run that play to perfection. Play that, uh, uh, you know, they drove Purdue nuts with it, you know, and, and uh, you get out... They, they, they run their offense out high, kind of like we like to do, and they do a, even a better job, I think, than we do as far as getting it, and it gives that, that whole back area along that baseline open for back cuts, and and uh, you just don't see that, you know. You don't see people running that, and then they've got a great target. They can throw that ball to that big guy, you know, and he's a seven-footer, ranking, and then everybody can back cut, and uh, it's it's really tough. It's, so we, we worked hard on it and didn't want them to do it that much, but they, uh, they, they, they broke us down quite a bit. Yeah. You were very uh, selective with your shots in the second half. I think you hit like 13 out of 18 or 18 out of 23. Very, very Is selective. Right? Yeah. There were times when it, it appeared to me that Brian Evans, for instance, was passing up shots he would ordinarily take. Have you had any discussion, or is this just Brian tonight? Max, if you'd have got chewed, chewed on, <laughs> <laughs> the last two days, the last two days uh, in practice, as uh, as our dear wonderful Brian did, why <laughs> you, you wouldn't shoot the rest of this year? <laughs> I, I understand completely. And I, I thought I saw a difference. <laughs> yeah, no, Brian. Brian's got to go look at the baskets, you know. And I uh, I voted. We had a little confab earlier. We we're trying to figure out who we we're going to start. Whether we we're going to start Bailey and or, or bring him off the bench. And uh, I was I stuck with Brian all the way through until yesterday's practice. And Brian <laughs> shot himself in the foot yesterday <laughs> in, in practice. And you know. Uh, uh, you know, Dockage, Coach Dockage did a great job this, and uh, you know, i got to give him a, a little plug here. You know, this, this ball game, we've got four or five days in preparation for this thing, and, of course, everybody thinks you're going to beat Northwestern, and everybody's looking ahead to Calvert, and everybody's looking ahead to to uh, uh, to, to winning the, uh, at least getting a chunk of the conference championship, and uh, he really helped keep us focused. You know, he had a great uh, a great plan, and he each each evening after practice, he'd work with the team and talk with them, and he did a tremendous job keeping the thing in a proper perspective so we could win it. And then, and then we had great practices on Monday and Tuesday, 
And well, we had a great practice before the Penn State game too. I mean, we, we were we, not many people could have beat us after, before that Penn State game. And uh, fortunately, we just uh, we fell flat yesterday. We were horrible. So as soon as I knew we were horrible, I said, I said, Coach, we're we're going to have a great game tonight. <laughs> so we had a bad one yesterday. So, Norm, uh, one of the things I think is so important now at the end of this basketball season is the fact that you have three ball games, but those three are spread out over about 14 or 15 days, and that gives you a chance to rest a little bit again, uh, which is very important going into the tournament. We uh, we didn't practice over an hour each each day. We practiced about 40 minutes, uh, and and we'll do that. We'll cut it down and. We'll get a day off here uh, uh, sometime now, and then we've got to, to play in a, in a week, about almost a week. And you know, it's uh, it can be a, a, a devil in disguise too, because you're used to playing, playing every third or fourth day, and then all of a sudden you you go vacant for a while, and you can get stale. But uh, uh, we're so beat up that uh, I don't think that that'll happen. You know, and, and Monday we got uh, uh, we got Greg Graham with five or six stitches in his leg right. from running into. Our, our our big guy and and uh, so you know we, we've got to guard against that because we are kind of thin well obviously this is a big ball game tonight a big win for indiana you you win a share or a chunk of the big 10 title now you can win it out right in your next ball game against michigan state and then again you've got a lot of preparation time for that one well coach pete bell is back there in the, uh, with coach knight now uh, uh, he's telling the the press and in coach's press conference on how we're going to do that that's uh, Nick Nolte's name in his movie is Coach Pete Bell. Uh -huh. And uh, Bob, as I was coming out here, Bob just grabbed him and says, come on, Nick, you're going to do the press conference. <laughs> so he's going to, Nick says, okay. He says, well, he says, I'll, I'll, I'll do it in character. I'll do it in Pete, Pete Bell. And if, if that doesn't sell, he says, I'll go back to Nick Nolte. So I'll be anxious <laughs> to see how that came out. Well, I noticed you were talking to him quite a bit before the game. Are you giving him some advice? No, no, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're actually, the star these actually, days, Norm. Actually, if, if, uh, if this thing go well max uh, uh, he's he's heard our show and heard he's heard about our show and and they're thinking maybe about using us in this movie so well, i think uh, that'd be a great so, idea uh, yeah sure. right believe <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we've got some swamp land right yeah right a whole bunch of swamp land max <laughs> all right norman congratulations enjoy the win and uh got a week's worth of rest uh, coming up for this ball club that's great well the next one's a big one now huh? that uh, we own it all if we can get the next one so Let's go get ready for that one. All right. Norm Ellenberger, our guest on the post-game show. We'll be back with some final thoughts after the 60-second timeout. This is Rick Mount. For years, parents, players, coaches have asked me to teach them to shoot a basketball like I do. Basically, I have taught myself using a procedure I call the Mount Method of Simplified Shooting. At my shooting camp on St. Joseph's campus in Rensselaer, Indiana, I teach this method to all boys and girls in rural. All campus receive my instructional video on shooting plus a video of them shooting with my comments on improvements. For a free brochure, call 219-583-3940. That's 219-583-3940. I stopped in a muffler shop the other day to see about their so-called guaranteed muffler service. What I saw was this guy offering me the same muffler he had just put on a 1959 Packard. Come on, not all cars are the same, and neither are their muffler systems. A muffler and exhaust system is an important part of your car's performance. At Jim's Tune-Up Center, their muffler service might cost you a little more, but when you leave, you're going to have a big A muffler designed especially for your car or light truck, and it's going to be warrantied for as long as you own that car. That's Jim's Tune-Up Center in Monticello on 1st Street under the big smokestack. 18 and one on the Big Ten, tie for the conference championship for sure. Can gain it out right next Wednesday when they take on Michigan State. The overall mark now stands 26 and three on the campaign. The Cats go to 7-17 seven overall, and they are now 2-13. Top score tonight for Northwestern, 23 for Cedric Nellums. Indiana led tonight by Calvert Chaney's Big Ten career performance of 35 points. He now becomes the all-time career Big Ten scoring champion, and he still has two ball games in regular season play, plus whatever tournament play the Hoosiers have to add to that uh, total. Well, we know he's going to get at least three more games out of this thing. Indiana tonight shot 60% which is uh, one of their highest percentages of the year. They held Northwestern to 46.7. Joe Smith's been giving me all kinds of stuff here. Three-point shooting, 9 of 19 tonight. They're on a pace to break a school record of 162 set last year. They've now hit 157 of them this year. That's 5.4 per game. They bear their 18 and 0 and they score 80 or more points. And Greg Graham tied a career high, six assists tonight. Ninth time in his career he's had that many. 
So, Indiana, again, the winner this evening over Northwestern. And, of course, the Hoosiers' next ball game will be next Wednesday night here at the Assembly Hall when they take on the Michigan State Spartans. Our airtime is at 7.40. Tip will be scheduled at 8.05. And in between now and then, you'll have the Bob Knight Talk Show to look forward to on Monday night, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Uh, over most of these same network stations. We hope you'll join us for that. Until then, for Max Skirbin and Joe Smith, this is Don Fisher. So long, everybody. The music that's at home.